the 1983 World Series is brought to you by Miller High Life. The best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. And by Chevrolet, official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. And by Gillette, makers of the Good News disposable razor with two blades. And by Mr. Goodbranch and General Motors Parts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet the participants in the 1983 World Series. First, the American League champion, Baltimore Orioles. Here is the manager of the Orioles, Joe Altavelli. Now the starting lineup. Leading off, the center fielder, number one, Al Bumbry. Batting second, the right fielder, number 28, Jim Dwyer. Hitting third, the shortstop, number eight, Cal Ripken, Jr. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 33, Eddie Murray. Hitting fifth, the left fielder, number 38, John Lowenstein. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number 25, Rich Dower. Hitting seventh, the third baseman, number 10, Todd Cruz. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 24, Rick Dempsey. In the ninth position, now in the bullpen, warming up the pitcher, number 34, Storm Davis. And here are the rest of the 1983 American League champion Baltimore Orioles. the National League champion, Philadelphia Phillies. Here is the manager of the Phillies, Paul Owens. Now the Phillies starting lineup. Leading off, the second baseman, number eight, Joe Morgan. Batting second, the first baseman, number 14, Pete Rose. Hitting third, the third baseman, number 20, Mike Schmidt. Batting fourth, the right fielder, number 23, Joe LaFay. Hitting fifth, the left fielder, number 34, Gary Matthews. That in sixth, the center fielder, number 21, Greg Gross. Hitting seventh, the catcher, number six, Bo Diaz. The shortstop, number 11, Ivan De Jesus. In the ninth position, warming up in front of the Phillies dugout, the pitcher, number 40, John Denny. And the rest of the 1983 National.
National League champion, Philadelphia Phillies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we honor America with our national anthem, which this afternoon will be sung by recording and television star Patti LaBelle. Clear skies, temperature around 65, beautiful day, and we're set for game four. It'll be underway when we come back. Nearly four hours. That's how long it took us to paint this room with a roller. Then we painted it in less than one hour with the new Wagner Power Roller. A living room that took nearly seven hours. The Wagner Power Roller finished in less than three. The Power Roller pumps paint straight from the can to the roller or to any of several optional accessories. Why waste your time painting a pan when you could be painting your walls instead? The Wagner Power Roller, the right tool for painting. This is a TRS-80 Model 4 family. We bought Radio Shack's TRS-80 Model 4 and saved $200. It has a huge library of educational programs. And lots of games. I do my personal and household budgeting on it. You can't believe the money we're saving. I'm even teaching myself to program. And the Model 4 is expandable at Radio Shack's low prices. Best of all, it's on sale now. The TRS-80 Model 4, now only $7.99, only at Radio Shack. What does it take to excel? You have my word. You'll get it tomorrow. It takes reliability, speed, economy. It takes express mail next day service from the post office. Our two-pound pack is just $9.35. Most others charge about twice that. We deliver over 90,000 packages on time every day. You're a man of your word. I just got it. Express mail service. We deliver excellence for less. Baseball fever. Catch it. It lasts forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the commissioner's box on the first base side of the Phillies dugout. In 1950, like 1983, the Phillies won the National League pennant. 
Our 1950 team was known as the Whiz Kids. Today, we remember the Whiz Kids by having their center fielder, who went on to become a two-time National League batting champion, now a Phillies broadcaster, throw out today's ceremonial first pitch. The first ball, please, Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn, now a broadcaster with the Philadelphia Phillies and a very popular man. In fact, every time the Phillies think about the changing managers and they run one of those polls in the newspapers, Richie's at or near the top, along with Commissioner Kuhn and his wife, Louisa, as the Phillies take the field. Defensively for the Phillies, Pete Rose back in the lineup at first base. No need to tell you what they've been writing about in Philadelphia this morning. Rose's absence yesterday. Morgan at second base. Joe has hit two home runs in the series. And then Yvonne De Jesus, who was involved in the key play as it turned out last night. He was charged with an error on the ground ball that scored what turned out to be the winning run. And Mike Schmidt still hitless is at third. In the outfield for Philadelphia, it's Gary Matthews in left field. And then in the platoon situation, they've got Greg Gross in center field in place of Maddox. And around and right is Joe LaFay, who played in game two. Back of the plate is the everyday catcher, Bo Diaz. And the pitcher, John Denny, was actually acquired last year, and they thought he was damaged goods. He was expendable. Cleveland sent him over here. The Phillies picked him up for the stretch run in 1982, and then all of a sudden, he turns around in 83 and is the probable Cy Young winner. Home plate umpire, a National League umpire today, Frank Pulley, Steve Palermo at first, and Dutch Renner at second. It's Marty Springstead at third, Ed Vargo down the line, and left and out Clark, who was back of the plate last night, can get a suntan today down the right field line. As you look around Veteran Stadium, 330 down the lines here, 371 to the power alleys, 408 to straightaway center. AstroTurf playing surface ballpark opened in 1971 located in South Philadelphia and as we've stressed every time we've been in here through the years and you've heard many times a great hitters park the ball carries very well. So John Denny will begin things by facing Al Bumbry Jim Dwyer and Cal Ripken in the first inning. Bumbry has spent his entire career in the Baltimore organization. He was a 1968 draft choice. His rookie year with the big club was 73. So he's been there all the way. Well in looking at Denny for the second time in this series to talk among the Oriole players in batting practice was uh, uh, they're going to look for a few more breaking balls than they did the first in the first game. And he starts him one one for a strike. And it didn't look like Al was looking for it. Denny the winningest pitcher in the league this year 19 and 6 with a 2.37 earned run average. Denny 30 years old throws another curve and Rose backhands at first base and Denny gets there in time for the out. That was another breaking ball was out in front of it just the least bit. We get to see it hit to Rose's right. Got it before it took the shard hop. You see how Pete takes his time and gives John a perfect throw as he runs over to cover first base. One out, and Jim Dwyer is the batter. Dwyer much traveled among his stops, St. Louis, where he was a teammate of John Denny in the mid 70s. Hit a home run the other night and looks at a strike, going one. Paul Owens, the 59 year old Philly manager and also general manager. One and one. That's a strike on the inside corner. One and two. That's the mound that Jim Palmer was talking about. He says it's illegal, it's too high, and that's why he loved it. He said if that's 12 inches, he's seven feet tall. 
Well, it's supposed to be a hitter's park, and if there's one way you can equalize that, it's build that mound up just a little bit. Uh, one of the reasons that, that helps is the pitcher's coming down with more momentum, and he can get a little bit more on his fastball that way. Chopper to the right side, and Joe Morgan waits for it, throws out Dwyer, and quickly two down here in the first inning. Cal Ripken will come up. And it's well documented now the middle of the Oriole order the heart of it really struggling Ripken two for ten and of course Murray to follow one for twelve so who would have believed if somebody would have said Ripken and Murray would be three for twenty two on Saturday that Baltimore would be leading in the World Series two games to one. One thing uh, today Cal Ripken senior talking to me privately told me that. Cal Ripken Jr. was going to get one of those breaking balls and hit it out of the park, but I think he's a little bit prejudiced. There he is, the third base coach. 1 0 oh on Jr., who looks at a fastball for a strike, and the count is 1 and 1. Then he takes care of that in a hurry. You mean bursting the Orioles' balloon? Well, perhaps it will forebode. Or tell We're going to get a look at where Ripken is standing in the box. So far back, he's almost out of it. And through the series, he's been reaching for outside pitches. The Philadelphia half uh, staff has stayed right on that outside corner, and it's he's a long way away from where they're throwing him. Two balls and one strike to count. And that's hit high in the air to deep left field. Was Dad right? Well, almost. It stays in as Matthews makes the catch in front of the wall. So the Orioles are out in order. And after a half, it's Baltimore nothing and Philadelphia coming up. People pump their own gas, they sometimes forget to check things. So when they come in for service. Mr. Goodwrench, there's something wrong. Well, let's take a look. Mr. Goodwrench knows your GM car. He has the right tools and the right GM training available to spot your problems fast. Mr. Goodwrench? Nothing serious. Just needs a tune-up. By the way, your oil is low. Here's how to check. Keep that great GM feeling. With Mr. Goodwrench. With genuine GM parts. On the coast, 9 to 5 can be a lot of fun. After that, it only gets better. Welcome to Miller Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. Bring your thirsty self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller's beer is what you have in mind. So welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. The Orioles defensively, Eddie Murray is at first base. And the second baseman is Rich Dower. Their infield has been the same for the entire series. Cal Ripken gets the start at shortstop. And over third is Todd Cruz with a tremendous arm. In the outfield, platoon situation in left, and it's John Lowenstein with three hits in game two. Out there today in center field, and they call the Bumblebee in Baltimore, Al Bunbury. And in right, Jim Dwyer. Back of the plate is Rick Dempsey, one of the heroes last night with a couple of doubles. And on the mound is Storm Davis, whom Mike Flanagan refers to as Cy Clone. They call Palmer Cy. And of course, uh, so much has been made of the physical similarities between Palmer and Storm Davis. And that's the nickname Flanagan gave him. As Joe Morgan stands in, he's had two home runs in the series. One in game one and one last night. And the count is 1 0. One and one account. Two good hard fastballs. Reggie said in the pregame show that Davis will stay primarily with that fastball. 
When he's ahead, he'll throw some sliders and some change-ups. But there's his bread and butter pitch. Went right by Joe Morgan. One ball, two strikes. Morgan to be followed by Rose and Schmidt. Bottom of the first inning. No score. Two and two now. You might think a 21 year old would be nervous and he certainly has to have a little, few butterflies in his stomach. But this is a cool customer out there. Full count three and two on Morgan. If Joe, the, four for the, 11 in the series. If the bullpen he warmed up on was not as high as this one, he, if he, it's going to take him a hitter or two to adjust to it. And down he goes. He kept it in on him, and Morgan strikes out, and you can see him turn and ask Frank Fully if that was a strike had he not swung. We'll see it again. Pitch sailed to the inside half of the plate. And it's it's funny how it's funny how all hitters will ask the umpire after they've swung if it's a strike. But if it's a called third strike, they'll always disagree with him. You rarely see the umpire say no. Rose takes up high. One and no to count. So Pete back in the lineup, and of course there is Tony Perez, who started at first base last night. Foul back, and the count is one and one. Pete Rose has always been a real good high fastball hitter. And that's where Storm Davis will be pitching him. Not on design, but he's got the high hard one like they talked about in the real old days. We'll get an indication of how good Storm Davis's fastball is going to be if he keeps it above the belt to Pete Rose. One and two. Oh, nice curve there. Oh. Very good curveball. He's got a real good overhand curveball that drops straight down. He's also got a good hard tight slider. And he uses those pitches when he's ahead of the hitter. If he falls behind, goes with his strength. And Rose getting fooled and strikes out. So Morgan and Rose strike out. Interestingly, that's the way Boddicker began game two the other night in Baltimore, striking out Morgan and Rose. That pitch was 95 miles per hour, and I judged. And uh, that's the fastest that we've had in the series so, so far. far. Mike Schmidt, who told Howard before game three that he was swinging the bat well, but he was 0 for 8 going into game three and was 0 for 4 last night. One and 0 the count. I don't think he was happy with the way he was swinging last night. I think he must have changed his thinking because he began chasing that high fast pitch. He has to lay off of that, but that's anxiety. When you don't have a hit, uh, you, you want to take your cuts. Fastball threw it right by him, and the count is one and one. Not 94 on that one on the jugs gun. Isn't that a beautiful shot from the Goodyear blimp? The spectrum behind Veteran Stadium and then John F. Kennedy Stadium. And they used to play every Army Navy game. One ball and one strike to count on Schmidt, the two out. And it's two and one. The Phillies looking for a rally. They have five runs in the three games. Four. On bases empty homers and the other an unearned run and Schmidt pops it up in foul ground and back out of play two and two the count Mike Schmidt's also a good fastball hitter of course when you hit 40 home runs uh, you're a good breaking ball hitter too he had trouble with the first pitch uh, he speeded it up a little bit on that and uh, wasn't far away from getting that solidly on the bat Dempsey now goes out to have a word with Cruz. That's something you don't see very often. Catcher calls time and has a word with his third baseman, as Dempsey just did. Cruz going back to his position. At the, what might he be saying? Earl? Well, one thing a third baseman would want to know with the fellow that throws as hard as Davis, he wants to know when the changeup is called. Not there. Strike three. And Davis starts the first inning by striking out the side. So this one begins like the other three. Another look at a just about perfect pitch. And at the end of one complete inning in game four, it's Baltimore nothing and Philadelphia nothing. Two blades are better than one blade. I get the fish back in debt. Two blades are better than one blade. 
The Good News Disposable Razor with two blades is better than any single blade disposable. With Good News, the first blade grabs the whisker and shaves it. Then the second blade can shave it again before it snaps back for a closer shave. Two blades are better than one blade. That's the Good News Razor from Gillette. The Good News Razor from Gillette. Chevrolet is taking charge with a new high-output Camaro Z28 and enough new magic to take its 2 plus 2 performance into another world. Z28. The magic of five powerful liters. 28. The magic of a new higher lift cam and super-tuned ignition that did a test track 0 to 55 in a quick six seconds. Magic of improved suspension. 28. Suspension that delivers remarkable new handling. The magic of sure-footed braking that's almost extraterrestrial. Z28. Camaro. More beauty. And a lot more beast. Don't miss it. Unbeaten Nebraska, the number one team in the nation, battles the upset-minded Missouri Tigers. ABC's NCAA College Football, next. All right, we go to the top of the second inning. No score. Both clubs going out one, two, three in the first, and it'll be Eddie Murray, John Lowenstein, and Rich Dower in the second inning. So Eddie Murray, who had a terrible series in 79, a bad playoff outside of one monstrous home run against the White Sox at Comiskey last Friday and one for 12 in the World Series. One and oh and that one hit in his first half bat he went the other way a left field single. Yes he did now again he's going to try to hit the ball as far as he possibly can not just over the fence but wants to reach the third deck and that's not helping. Him. Two and oh the count. One thing I know he's heard a million times is be patient. Try to get a good pitch to hit, and he doesn't want to hear that anymore from anybody. Two and well, he's trying to remain calm, but if you saw last night's game and the close-ups of Murray, the frustration was just etched all over his face. Very evident. There's no frustration in John Denny. There is only poise and confidence. He made a reservation for 15 people. At five o'clock tonight at the original book barns. He obviously expects a quick victory. <laughs> he works in a hurry. The three games thus far have been relatively rapidly played. And this one off to the same type of start as Murray hits it high in the air to right field. And moving over is LaFay who makes the catch. So one away, and again, Eddie Murray now one for 13 and watch his reaction. Here he's, uh, he's going to show his frustration. Takes the bat, tosses it right up in the air. He knew he had he had a pitch right there that he should have hit. One down and Lowenstein, the batter. Single double home run in game two. And in game one, of course, he made this play to Rob Bo Diaz. That sensational catch to take a home run away from the Philly catcher. In the air to center field, good wood, but right at somebody as Gross hauls it in. And Denny has set down the first five, so two away here in the second inning. And Rich Dower is the batter. Looks like we're uh, falling right into the pattern of the first three ball games with very good pitching. The Phillies coming in to game four, hitting 172 in the series. The Orioles, 206. Ground ball back to Denny. And so the first nine men up in this game have gone down in order. And at the end of an inning and a half, and Philly, Orioles, nothing. Philly's nothing. All right, children. Who's going to be the first one to recite the alphabet? How about you, Ann? A, B, C, D, E, F. E F E F Hutton. When E F Hutton talks, people listen.
11.05 p.m., the Hospital for Special Surgery, New York. And where are the surgeons? Watching television. Not just any television, a Sony with a remarkable Trinitron system for a picture that's critically focused, critically lifelike. Maybe that's why Sony won an Emmy for its picture, something no other TV could have done. Not if their life depended on it. For the first time in his life, he's struggling, having a hard time in math. He needs help. He can get that help with the home computer from Texas Instruments. It has more educational cartridges than any other computer. They challenge, encourage, make learning fun. The home computer from Texas Instruments. It can give your child a head start in school that could last a lifetime. Commissioner's box here in Philadelphia. Bowie and Louisa Kuhn and man of the blue right hat, there. of course. Happy Chandler. Happy Chandler. Chandler. Former commissioner. And in the middle of that picture in the second row was Kuhn's trusted assistant, Sandy Haddon. Heavy of other folks there whom we may have the opportunity to identify later. Want to know the count? George Foster. Looking on, now the Mets left fielder, of course, and then looking at some of his teammates, in fact. His ex-teammates from the Big Red Machine days as LaFay fouls it back. And the count two and one. Again, there's no mystery when Storm Davis falls behind in the count. The count was two and oh, and there was that good hard fastball. Davis is throwing at Gossage and Nolan Ryan speed. And Reggie Jackson made the point in the pregame show that he would be doing this because Al Tabelli told him he only had to go six or seven innings. It could be stretched out by Davis himself if he feels good in the sixth or seventh. They might, and uh, he's got a little bit of a lead. They might try to leave him in just a little bit longer. However, it remains to be seen if the fills adjust. LaFay popping a foul and drifting back out of play. So the count stays three and two. The Oriole uh, coaches and Joe Altabelli himself will be watching the speed gun along with us to see if he drops anything mm -hmm. as the innings go on. That was 94, and it may be that he'll reach his peak speed around the fourth inning. In the air to center field and an easy play for Al Bumbry. One gone as Davis starts by retiring the first four. There's Joe Altabelli in his rookie season as the manager of the Orioles. Spent the last two years as the Yankees' third base coach. Before that, one season at Columbus in the Yankee system after getting fired by the Giants in 79. Gary Matthews. Matthews had 10 home runs during the regular season, and he's hit four in postseason, three in the playoffs. One last night. Looks at a strike on one. Oh, and two. A good curveball. That was beautifully. And that ball went right down, as you suggested early. Well, they've got to go up to the plate looking fastball when a man's throwing 94 miles an hour. So if he gets that over, it's really going to be tough. Grounded to third. Cruz. Throws him out. So two away here in the second inning. Hey, one thing we're getting a look at in the World Series and postseason play, a fellow like Todd Cruz, who's been around and spent a lot of time, of course, at Seattle recently, so doesn't get a lot of, of exposure, but everybody getting to see what sort of an arm he has. And he certainly has a good one, an outstanding arm. Two down in the second inning, and you can see why a fellow like Cruz is in the lineup despite hitting 199 this year. Gross is the batter. A strike and the count on one. Orioles have uh, playing gross to left field. This is the most exaggerated opposite field defense that we've seen so far this year. And remember the other night we remarked when gross came up as you look at the defense that they had been playing gross straight away the other evening with Boddicker pitching. But they adjust today. 
And he comes right back through the middle, but on a one hopper, it's speared by Davis. And so both pitchers begin by retiring the first six. So here we go again. Same pattern. After two, no score in Philly. Al Pacino is Scarface. Scarface. For one brief moment, the world was his. Scarface. He loved the American dream with a vengeance. Mature audiences suggested coming December to a theater near you. For eight hours a day, we're doing what we like doing. Can't beat that. Want to bet? Welcome to Miller Time. It's all yours and it's all mine. Bring your thirsty self right here. The rich, smooth taste of Miller's beer is what you have in mind. So welcome to Miller Time. Welcome to the rich, smooth taste of Miller High Life. Tonight on T.J. Hooker. Nobody move. The heat comes down in Chinatown. It's a shooting gallery, and we're the targets. Tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. We go to the third inning. In game four, Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, Earl Weaver in Philadelphia. Baltimore leading two games to one. Of course, tomorrow we're right back here at 4.30 Eastern time. Todd Cruz looks at a strike. Cruz, Dempsey, and Davis in the third inning. One and one. Check swing foul and the count one and two. We're in the bottom third of the Baltimore order and they weren't supposed to do much during the course of this season. But in the two victories they've come through pretty good for the, for the Baltimore baseball club. Absolutely. Chopper by the mound and De Jesus near the bag has trouble and that costs him. Otherwise if he fields it cleanly and makes the transfer he probably gets him. Couldn't get the ball out of his glove, or so it appeared. Right. Could not get the ball out of his glove. It's one of those AstroTurf base hits. Hit, that ball on grass would be right back to the pitcher. You see Denny shrink his shoulders there, but there's the important part of that play. He got it caught in his glove. We had a good picture of it, and Cruz beat the ball out. One more shot. Had a double hitch and took just a little too much time. So Cruz is at first, and Dempsey, who had two doubles last night, looks at a strike, and the count is on one. That was a curveball, and ordinarily Rick Dempsey has some tr problems with curveballs, but we're in the World Series now, and he seems to be able to rise to the occasion. Cruz at first. It's been scored an infield hit, and there's Denny's good move to first base, and it almost caught Todd. Denny, Denny's known to have a real good move to first base. Rose holding Cruz on. And it's inside. One ball and one strike on Dempsey. The Orioles are not known as a running club. But the way this series is going, maybe Joe Altabelli will think about stealing more bases than he would ordinarily during the season. Fly ball to center field and shallow for Gross. One out. And Storm Davis. Coming up, Howard talked to Rick Dempsey, who should know. And here's what Dempsey had to say about Storm Davis. 
Storm Davis is more of a power pitching type. Uh, he throws hard fastball, hard slider, and a good hard curveball. Once in a while, he'll take a little off his curveball and make it a bigger breaking curveball, and it's real effective when he's throwing the ball over the plate. He's had a little trouble with his neck the second half of this season, but uh, in that game the other day against the White Sox, he was just as sharp as I've ever seen him for six innings. He just kind of mowed him down. For six innings, you notice? Yes, he did. That's exactly what he said. We have a sacrifice situation here. Uh, Storm Davis hasn't gone to the plate uh, at all during the course of the regular season. In spring training, they take a little bunting practice, but really in the American League, you work more on fundamentals and sacrifices. He misses the bunt attempt there, and so quickly it's no balls and two strikes. At least you worked more on fundamentals than sacrifices. It took you four games to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they ask you why Lowenstein didn't bunt in game two in 79. <laughs> I still don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's around to bunt again and misses for strike three. So Davis can't lay one down, can't even make contact. That's the first strikeout for John Denny. And that's understandable. Last night, Sixto Lescano was in a sacrifice situation and failed to get it down. So the top of the order now in Bumbry. Game like this, two pitchers going like these two have been going thus far. This game might well turn on who hits first among the big hitters, whether it be Murray or Schmidt. As I said, uh, the Orioles are not a run running ball club, but with two outs and a single hitter at home plate, you might look for something here. Oh, and one to count. Might look for a pickoff with Denny's move. He's got a good one. Denny thinking the same thing that you are and goes over there. He's got two moves like uh, most pitchers have. He'll wait for Cruz to get an extra step before he gives him the real good one. And that was the real good one. He's quick. Rose. Along with that, he's got a quick release to home plate. You see Rose question that? First base umpire. Telling Palermo to bear down, I guess. First base umpire from the American League. And Bumbry drills it to left center field, but Matthews is there and stays with it to make the catch. Bumbry hit it right on the button. No runs, one hit, leave Cruz, following after two and a half, no score. Canon is proud to be the official 35mm camera of the 1984 Olympics. Like gold medalist Jennifer Chandler, it takes the ultimate in precision to perform at this level. Here, the Canon AE-1 program performs, capturing Chandler's high diving artistry through Canon's high technology. And it's so simple, you flip for it. Canon's AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. Every four years, it brings people together and stirs their national pride. This celebration of excellence we call the Olympics, the largest peacetime event in the world. And in 1984, Transamerica Insurance and Transamerica Occidental Life will support the dreams of people all over the world by insuring the Olympic Games. Transamerica Insurance, Finance, Manufacturing, Transportation, Innovation. The power of the pyramid is working for you. Listen to these stuffy noses. Apple does it have it. Dristan doesn't have it. Only Sinex has it. Ooh. That quick feeling of relief from instantly penetrating Vicks vapors, plus a powerful decongestant that opens nasal passages and allows you to breathe freely. Ah, complete relief. For up to 12 hours. Sinex Long Acting gives you both instant relief Ooh. and complete relief. Ah. The most prestigious match play tournament in the world. Jack Nicklaus leads America's best against the team from Great Britain and Europe in the Ryder Cup golf matches tomorrow on ABC. And after this morning's matches and Ryder Cup play, the United States and Great Britain tied 6 6 with play to resume this afternoon. Look at that graphic. Sandy did that. The opening game of the 63 World Series against the Yankees. Today, Storm Davis did. Only 21 years old. 
I'll tell you this, the Dodgers really stormed the Yankees that year. Beat them in four straight. Drysdale pitched as great a game as I have ever seen pitched in that series. Bo Diaz leading off. De Jesus following. It's hit in the air to shallow right center field. Dowers going out and calling for it and makes the catch. So one away and Storm Davis has started by retiring the first seven men he's faced. Up comes Avante Jesus, a good year blip high above Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. And a shot on a just a gorgeous Chamber of Commerce afternoon. Perfect. It certainly is that. Couldn't be a better day for baseball. Had some rain for game one, but no stoppages. A little fog for game two. And then they picked the right day for the off day because it's important here on Thursday. That's a strike to De Jesus, and the count is 0 and 1. Yvonne 2 for 9 in the series. One ball, one strike to count. 17 hitters have gone to the plate, and we've only had one ball hit hard. That line drive that Bumbry hit to him in the last half inning. Two and one now. And that's no reflection on the hitters in this series. It's just been outstanding pitching. How do you know? <laughs> To right center field, hit relatively hard, but here comes Bumbry to make the catch. He's now got a good jump on it. And there are two down. That ball was decently struck. Bumbry came a long way for this ball. I think the ball was hit a little bit on the trademark. Hung up there just long enough for Al to get there. He's got good speed, too. John Denny. 170 career average. Thousand into the upper deck, and the count is 0 and 1. Yeah, just as good a cut as some of the hitters have had <laughs> up to this point. That's lined to left field, right on the button, but going back to make the catch is Lowenstein. That so the hitter is starting to make contact, but to no avail. That was the best hit ball in the game so far. But and the Phillies are gone. By the Phillies. That's nine straight set down by Storm Davis. We'll go to the fourth. No score. Year, Ryder buys thousands of new trucks to rent here and leave there. Rental truck, huh? What's the matter? Clutch it right out? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's an automatic. Oh, the power steering going, huh? Oh, no. It's it's a new truck. Well, what's wrong? Do you have a restroom? Restroom. So rent a new truck from Ryder and save yourself a lot of headaches. What was that? Another one of them new Ryder trucks. Oh. Newer trucks make Ryder the best truck money can rent. Charlie, another IBM typewriter. <laughs> I know. They're the typewriter secretaries prefer most. Charlie, an IBM display writer. I know. It's the best-selling standalone text processor. Charlie, the IBM Model 60 copier. I know. A lot of performance for a low price. Charlie, if you know so much, how come you're not president of this place? Give me time. Now, Washington's better. Way better. Nashville's better. Far better. Los Angeles is better. Really better. Now, Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Almost every seven days, a brand new Holiday Inn hotel opens in the locations you want the most. Better hotels in the best locations. That's why we're number one. We're number one. Worldwide host. First with what you want the most. Call 800 Holiday. Holiday Inn is a better place. Tonight, Jamie Parr goes overboard for Heather Locklear on the love boat. Then a working girl traps Rourke on Fantasy Island. Tonight, all starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Well, those two men have won a few games in their careers. Jim Palmer, foreground. Dennis Martinez, but right now both relegated to the bullpen. At one time in the clubhouse, Palmer was known as Cy Old, and Dennis Martinez was known as Cy Future. All those names come, came from Mike Flanagan. Flanagan and Gold Davis, Cyclone. 
I had a laugh about Davis as Dwyer leads off here in the fourth. They talk about him being a Palmer clone, even to the extent that he had, what, neck problems this year as well? The last month of the season. You've heard Jim complain about that from time to time, haven't you? I have. I've heard Jim complain about many things from time to time. He, he can stir anything up. He invented the almond herb. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Jim Palmer. 38 today. Dwyer drills it to right field. The fake comes on and has to play it on the kangaroo hop. Thought for a moment he'd come in and make the play, and then he thought better of it. So Dwyer continues to show his ability to cope with John Denny. Just seems to know every pitch that Denny's throwing. So two hits in the game, both for the Orioles. And at least we've seen some well-hit balls. Bumbrey lining to Matthews in the third, and to Jesus and Denny. Hitting it on the money in the bottom of the inning, and a solid single by Dwyer here with Ripken at the plate. And they're staying on the outside half of the plate with him, and that's exactly why Ripken hasn't been able to do much. You might be right, Howard. He might, he might have to step up in the box just a little bit. It's sharply and through in the hole for a base hit to left field. So Dwyer is at second base, and the Orioles are runners at first and second. And up comes Eddie Murray with men on base again. It's almost a replay of the championship series. It was in the third game in the championship series that Eddie came up in the first inning and broke the game wide open with a three-run homer. Well, one of these big guys got to break out sooner or later, be it Murray or Schmidt. And as I suggested earlier, whichever one breaks out first, that could turn the game. What a no, boxed by Diaz, but no advance. That, that was a fastball, and Eddie never moved a muscle on that pitch. It seems to me like he's standing up there waiting for the first good breaking ball to hit. That was an 88-mile-an-hour fastball. Eddie Murray. Hit in the clutch during the regular season. Runners in scoring position. His average was 341. Lines it to right field, and he gets a base hit. LeFay plays it on a hop, and they will stop Dwyer at third, so they're loaded up on three solid singles here in the fourth inning. He hit a curveball. There were indications on the first pitch when he didn't even offer it that fastball that he was looking for it. And the Philadelphia bullpen will get busy. And LaFay has one of the greatest arms in baseball. First, the runner had to wait to make sure the ball couldn't be caught. And then second, you don't run on this kid. He has some arm. That's exactly right. The ball was hit hard, Howard. He was cold turkey if he tried to go home. So Lowenstein comes up, Philly infield, looking for the double play. They'll concede a run on a grounder, and it's a strike, 0-1. Where they are aligned right there. De Jesus and Morgan will turn a pair to try to stay away from the big inning and concede a run on the ground ball to them. Good foul outside. First in the count, no balls and two strikes. That's become a familiar sight here in Philadelphia. The folks along the, the lines bringing the nets. Bases filled, nobody out in this situation yesterday. Carlton got out of it. Same kind of jam, and one would have thought at that point the birds would fold, but they did. One and two. That's Marty Bystrom, and interestingly, originally, he would have been the starting pitcher today. Paul Owens was going to go with four, but instead he opts for Denny, and Bystrom's the long man. And Lowenstein strikes out as Denny took just enough off of it, so he gets a very big out. That is an important strikeout, and we'll see right now if the bottom of the Oreo lineup can come through again. It was a tremendous change of pace, and John was just fooled from the time it left the pitcher's hand. Get to see it again here. You'll see as he releases the ball, Lowenstein lunges. The bat is way ahead of the bat is all the way around by the time the ball gets to the catcher. This will give you a look at that shot. lunge. That's it. Denny's father. We told you that warm and touching story of how they were reunited after so many years. Dower takes that five. John flying him in from Australia. Exactly. Home.
Here's the 1-0 pitch now to Dower. A looper to right field that will fall in for a base hit. Dwyer will score. Ripken is being waved in. LaFay's throw comes through, not in time. Murray goes to third, and Baltimore leads it two to nothing. And again, the bottom of the order comes through for Baltimore. Well, here we go with those functional players. Earl has described why he likes Dower so much for you in earlier telecasts, and somehow this team. As you look at it again, this kind of player comes through. Note he went to the opposite field, Earl, where he's so adept. Yes, he did. The ball wasn't hit really good, but you could tell he was going with the pitch. Huh? Mm -hmm. Four singles in the inning. Another look now. Almost like he tried to put it right where, right where it landed. So Dwyer scored easily, and with Ripken being waved in. Rose lets it go through, but too late. And after Osteen visits the mound, Denny will go to work on Todd Cruz with one out in the fourth inning. On that play, we got to see Joe LaFay's arm again. It was a perfect throw that could have been handled by the cutoff and held Richie Dower at first base. If LaFay throws that ball over the cutoff man, man's head, it allows Dower to keep traveling right on down to second base. So Murray is at third. Dower at first, held by Rose. Cruz, who hit only 199 this season, at least came through in the clutch. He had 293 with men in scoring position. This is a breaking pitch on one. Today, joined the Orioles. He had six RBIs. That looked like the deal of all time when they picked him up that night. One and one. They weren't going real good at that time. He certainly gave him a shot. He needed it. He started the season at Seattle, as did his namesake. No relation, Julio Cruz, who wound up as the second baseman at Chicago. Grounded foul. That's the young man who made Chicago's season. That was the unheralded trade of the year. Tony Bernazard was playing second self protectively after the injury, couldn't execute the double play. They got Julio Cruz, and there's no better fielding second base. That's exactly right. Great range and an added speed to that ball club. One and two, the count on Cruz. Philly infield, double play depth. And it's fouled straight back. Why did you duck? Well, it looked like it was coming into the area here. I can't count on Weaver, and I know I can't count on you. No, I couldn't count on you. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Still one ball, two strikes on Cruz. Uh, to me, with the real good breaking ball that John Denny's got, uh, the last two pitches were fastballs, and they were up. He's throwing his fastball at 87 miles an hour. Good breaking pitch. Struck oh, him out. What a beauty. Strikeout number three for John Denny. A big out if they can strand this runner at third. We see a very good curveball here. You can really see it break in this good picture. And if you throw Todd Cruz that pitch, he's not going to get the bat on it a lot. That's why I was surprised when Denny threw him the, the two pitches, uh, two fastballs previously. Now, here's an interesting situation. It Even though is. it's not first base open, a base is open, and thus they will walk Dempsey with runners at first and third and take their chances with Storm Davis, who could not make contact as he attempted to bunt in the third inning. Paul Owens was talking with me today on how impressed he is with Rick Dempsey. You watch him in the series, you certainly have to be. Dempsey's done everything that uh, had to be done so far, including help out offensively. Earl, tell me about uh, your feelings in regard to that strategy right there, first and third in the intentional walk. I think it's a very good move. It puts a little pressure on uh, Denny, the pitcher. He has to throw strikes. If not, he's going to walk in, to, in a run. But when you got a pitcher that won 19 games during the course of the ball game, you have to trust him. If you can't trust this fellow that's out there now, you can't trust anybody. Starts Davis with a strike, and so the bases are loaded. Two down, fourth inning. Baltimore leading 2 nothing. Did he check in time? He did not. Well, there's one thing we know. They can't have a scouting report on Storm Davis at home plate because he only went to bat once. <laughs> and he might not have even went to bat once. And he's not fooling around with him either, coming right at him. And the 0-2 pitch, and that's that in a hurry. 
So Denny strikes out the side, but in between. Two runs, four hits, and after three and a half, two to nothing, Orioles. Here comes the hottest selling Chevrolet today. The fun to drive front drive Cavalier. Fire up two liters of electronically fuel injected fun and experience more horsepower than the top three imports. The minute you feel Cavalier before, you'll know what makes Cavalier the hottest selling Chevrolet today. Chevrolet! And you. Taking charge. Two blades are better than one blade. I get the big shave I can get. Two blades are better than one blade. That's the good news razor from Gillette. The good news disposable razor with two blades is better than any single blade disposable. With good news, the first blade grabs the whisker and shaves it. Then the second blade can shave it again before it snaps back for a closer shave. Two blades are better than one blade. That's the good news razor from Gillette. The good news razor from Gillette. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The Congratulations, your coach's a pretty mean game. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. Did I teach you the part about the winning coach buying the loan, Brown? You got it. Give me ten minutes. I gotta go yell at my players. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. So tell me, what'd you say to your teacher? I told him we were out coached. Don't miss it. Unbeaten Nebraska, the number one team in the nation, battles the upset-minded Missouri Tigers. ABC's NCAA College Football, next. What a shot that is on a beautiful day in Philly. That's, Independence Hall. That's Philadelphia, historic city. Joe Morgan to lead off, bottom of the fourth. By the way, halftime of the... Football game this afternoon featuring Nebraska and Missouri. A live interview with Marcus Dupree. With Morgan leading off in the bottom of the fourth inning, hitting at the center field, and Bumbrey is there to make the catch. Marcus Dupree, of course, missing earlier this week and now apparently has left the University of Oklahoma. The running back, the star running back. And an interesting story. Interesting something that story. something that's well, it's been basically buried this week because of the World Series. Otherwise, it would be uh, on top of most of the sports pages in the country. Talking about Southern Mississippi, aren't they? That's what I saw this morning. Pete Rose, a strike, and the count 0 and 1. Well, we should get the scoop at halftime. Quickly, 0-2 on Rose, who struck out his first trip. He is, uh, <laughs> anybody could have lip read that. <laughs> well, Pete's saying to himself, uh, how are you going to hit that kind of pitch as hard as he's throwing? He's not saying it to himself. Rose fouling it back. It remains no balls, two strikes. I wonder what I'd... 93 miles per hour on the fastball, so the speed is still up there. Yet they've been getting wood on him. Backs him off. Last three balls were hit hard, including mm -hmm. the one by John Denny, the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Rose lining at the center field and in for a base hit. So the Phillies have their first hit and their first base runner as Pete Rose on a one-two pitch after Davis had come inside. Lines at the center field. Pete Rose's whole history as a ball player. It didn't matter how who the pitcher was, how good a pitcher he was. Let him see them a time or two, and he knows how to adjust and get to them. Well, after he saw the one curveball, he said something to the umpire, but he might have said, throw me that curveball one more time and see what happens. And that, that's what the pitch was. Now, Murray got a single. Turned out to be a very important blow. Schmidt still hitless in the series, hoping to explode. Mike O for 13, fouling it away, and the count is 
Mancato at 255 during the regular season and had a good playoff series. Shatters his bat and pops it in the air to shallow. Left center field could be trouble and is. And Rose in a brilliant piece of base running winds up at third. Very few players would do what Rose did. That's a ball that lands between three fielders, and yet Pete, he's been around a long time, has the uncanny sense of knowing it's going to fall in. Always was and always will be. When you have baseball instinct like that, you know exactly what to do. Something that happened on that ball is Mike Schmidt had a real healthy cut. It hit him, it hit him close to the hand. Here comes Rose again now. The minute the ball was hit into left field, Pete made a decision. It's going to drop. Here I go to third base. That showed it very well. At any rate, both outfielders took a step back on that ball because they thought it was hit harder than it was. How do you put something like that in a box score, the way Rose ran the bases in that instance? First and third. One out. Infield double play depth, and the batter is LaFay. One and no to count. So it's Baltimore leading 2-0, and Joe Altabelli looking on. The Phillies, who were dormant through three, nine up and nine down, trying to rally here in the fourth. And LaFay drills it toward the right field corner. Fair ball. Rose comes in to score. Smith is being held at third on a double by LaFay, and it's 2-1. to one. You could see they were beginning to get to Storm Davis. We had commented that three straight balls had been solidly hit. Here we get the shot from high above. You'll be able to see Jim Dwyer go over and take the ball off of the wall. One shard hop. Give a give a we got it from another angle. He gave a perfect throw to the cutoff man Richie Dower, and Rich Dower does have a very good arm. The fans booed a little bit because Schmidt was stopped at third base, but in my opinion, I thought he would have been thrown out at home plate. I agree with you. I don't see any question about it. Ray Miller going to the mound, the Oriole pitching coach. The crowd was booing, and Schmidt was held at third. Sammy Stewart gets up in the Baltimore bullpen. There he is. That was a 91-mile-an-hour fastball that Joe LaFay hit. He does have a quick bat. Yes, he does, and... Uh, He's dropped three miles off his fastball, but just as much as that, and I'm starting to catch up with uh, Storm Davis. They've seen him the first time. They know they've got to get started quicker. And going uh, going into the second round, uh, I might have to question the fact that Davis isn't throwing more breaking balls this time around the order. So Miller drops back to the dugout. It's getting to be a religion in this series. The team that scores first loses the game. That doesn't mean that Baltimore will in this case, but the Phils are striking back and quickly. There is Matthews, and the infield is back as Matthews takes outside. Cruz could come home, as you can see, but on a grounder to short and second, they'll concede the run. They feel in this ball game like they're going to be able to score again. Scripper foul, one ball and one strike to count. One out, bottom of the fourth inning. Baltimore leading at 2-1 with Mike Schmidt at third. Joe LaFay off to his lead at second. And Matthews, who has four postseason home runs at the plate, with Gross on deck. Good pitch. With the base open, there'd be a chance that they might try to make real good pitches, pitch around Matthews, but that pitch was a fastball. Storm still feels like he's throwing it hard. It was right down the middle. Two balls, two strikes to count. Full count. He took something off of it. That wasn't his fastball, so the crowd moves anyway. That wasn't his fastball. He overtried to throw his curveball. Full count. Three and two on Gary Matthews. Time call because uh, something has come out of the stands. Balloons again in left field. Some of the debris swirling. Last two fastballs went 90 and 91 miles per hour, so he's still getting good velocity. Anytime you're over 90 miles an hour, that's a tough fastball to hit. Three and two to count. 
Tying on a third, go ahead, run at second. One out. It stays three and two. First base open, Greg goes to follow Matthews. And Gary's a boy, so they're loaded up. Bases loaded with one out in the fourth inning, and Greg Gross coming up. He is not an easy batter to double up. And he also makes contact. Infield will look for the double play. Gross, who started the season basically as a pinch hitter, winds it up as the platooning center fielder with Maddox. Found at the plate, 0 1. Quite a descriptive graphic, isn't it? Yes, it is, and that's good. Howard. Found away, and the count, no balls and two strikes. The league average, by the way, in that situation would be about 58%. No balls, two strikes. One and two now. He hasn't lost a lot of fastball, but it seems like he's trying to overthrow it this time, trying to keep it over 90 miles an hour. Lifted in the air, curling foul. Not much room down there and back in the seats. So it stays one and two on Greg Gross. Bases are loaded. Mike Schmidt at third, Joe LaFay is at second, and Gary Matthews at first. And we see by where that foul ball went why the Oreo outfield played Greg Gross to left field. He goes back through the middle. It's a bouncer fielded by Dower, and he turns the double play. So they walk Matthews, even though it wasn't an intentional walk. They weren't going to give him anything good to hit, and it sets up a ground ball double play. And so Philadelphia settles for a run, and we'll go to the fifth. It's 2-1 to one Orioles. Burger King presents the McDonald's. An unusual interview. Is it true all of you switched to Burger King? Yes! How come? Bacon double cheeseburger. Plain broiling. The Whopper. French fries. Being McDonald's, you must take a lot of ribbing. Yes, we can't show our faces anywhere anymore. Would you advise everyone to switch to Burger King no matter what their name is? You bet. You bet. Okay, America. Now, when you switch to Burger King, you can tell them... The McDonald's sent you! Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate Update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies, but the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent. For life, home, and auto, you're in good hands with Allstate. The Olympians, that tough breed of steel-belted radials from Kmart, warranted to go the distance. Made by Uniroil, Olympian's aggressive European all-season tread takes every grueling mile in stride. Olympians, warranted to go the distance, and now you can get the Olympian 2 with its 45,000-mile wear-out warranty at a very generous sale price, as low as $37. Olympian 2 by Uniroil. More proof. We've got it, and we've got it good. Monday, catch those irresistible, incredible kids. Meet America's fastest eight-year-old sprinter and jump high for a steeplechase on That's Incredible, Monday right after football. City Hall area of Philadelphia. We've talked extensively about the great urban renewal of this city. And as I've mentioned, you can feel the roots of the country here. Al Bumbery hits a bouncer to Rose who backs up, throws to Denny, covering... And in time for the out. So a nice play by Pete, 
who could not charge that one. Played it just right. And again, it's an AstroTurf ground ball. Hits on the ground and takes that one big hop. Pete didn't want to come in and try to get it on a short hop. He went back, got it on a big hop, made it a little difficult to make a good throw, and Denny made a good play reaching behind him as they got the out. Excellent play. And that's the double play on Gross, was an artificial turf ground ball, hit to the one spot, Dowa perfectly placed where you could double him up. Was it the right place at the right time? That's yep. what we say in the dugout. Jim Dwyer with the count, one ball and no strikes, has grounded out and singled, his base hit in the fourth inning, started the Baltimore rally. One and one. Denny for the Cy Young. We mentioned uh, earlier on in the series that the, the balloting is done before postseason play starts for the Cy Young MVP and Rookie of the Year award. So the, the balloting's over. It has nothing to do with anything that happens in postseason play, and all they wait for now is to make the announcements. And that's a good idea because you'd hate to have a wonderful season wiped out by four or five bad ball games in a World that, Series. In, well, you know, what's funny is Eddie Murray could wind up as the MVP this year in the American League. And then people will say, well, how can they vote him the MVP with this kind of World Series? Well, you have explained it. To do with it. Exactly. <laughs> Chopper to Rose, waits for it, and they've got that one down to a science. Two down, and Cal Ripken will come up on Monday night. Redskins will take on the Packers. Monday night football as you look down upon the city of Philadelphia. Just a spectacular, cloudless, beautiful, gorgeous day. Redskins, Packers, Monday Night Football, 9 o'clock. That's an off night in the World Series if we go on to a sixth game. We'll be in Baltimore on Tuesday. Redskins are a terrific team. The pack, almost defenseless, in and out, crushed by the Giants, almost unbelievably, and by the Detroit Lions. Yet they have that great offense with the likes of Lofton and Jefferson and Lynn Dickey. Outside to Cal Ripken, 1 and 0. Oh. Two out, no one on. Fifth inning, 2 1 Baltimore. Ripken hit a curveball hard the first time up. He got a base hit on a fastball. The first two pitches to him this at bat were curveballs. Two and one. Ripken has as good a chance as Murray to wind up winning the American League MVP this year. Two and two. Good breaking. Was a bad front. Beautiful. And Cal Ripken was looking for it. He just got too far out in front of it. He had him totally off stride on that. He was That's off his foot. That's a foul ball off his foot at the plate. And did hurt. Hmm. When it rolls down that hard, the, the third base, you know it hurts. <laughs> I had a ball player who's now. Uh, teammate of Reggie Jackson's Bobby Gritch every time he hit one into the dirt whether it uh, hit his foot or not he'd go down on the ground and you'd be surprised how many times he got a foul ball called on it. we get to see it again pitch got in on Cal Ripken's hands fouled straight down and that hurts believe me that hurts Come again. What were you saying? You're saying somebody was faking it in other Bob words? Bob Rich, every time he hit a, a ball like that, <laughs> even if it went out to the it shortstop, and he got a lot of foul balls called. That's grounded foul. Does he still do it? Yes, he does. Ask Reggie. He knows. We're going to open up Reggie's mic. Well, All right, Reggie. Fess up I don't, here. I don't want to incriminate my teammate. <laughs> right there. He wears a pad on his You're leg right the there. the Fifth Amendment. Oh, Bobby Gritch, a very honest man. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up. Shallow right. Rose is going out, fighting the sun. And makes the catch. So in the inning for P, two assists and a put out. And at the end of four and a half, Baltimore two, Philadelphia one. For the first time in his life, he's struggling, having a hard time in math. 
he needs help. He can get that help with the home computer from Texas Instruments. It has more educational cartridges than any other computer. They challenge, encourage, make learning fun. The home computer from Texas Instruments. It can give your child a head start in school that could last a lifetime. More people buy GM cars and trucks. And when they're ready, more people buy GM again. That leadership takes hard work in every detail. That's why nobody test drives as many cars, as many miles, under as many tough conditions. Nobody goes to greater lengths to design for beauty, comfort, and durability, inside and out. Nobody uses more advanced electronics in their cars than the company that created them for the 747. Nobody destroys as many new cars because nobody performs as much safety-related research and testing. GM puts in the extra time, extra effort, and attention to every detail. That's the commitment to excellence that leads more people to buy GM cars and trucks than any other kind. And it's why GM owners are the most loyal on the road. Nobody sweats the details like GM. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, Earl Weaver. As an, <laughs> you look at Joe DiMaggio again last night, signing uh, autograph after autograph all night long. Same thing today. He thought he could hide away. He secreted away in the stands because the great man likes his privacy. A very private person. Diaz looks at a strike. You can't, hide, you can't hide from Chet Forty and you know it. No. Interesting the way uh, John Denny settled down. That's Rip Fair down the line into the corner where it takes that strange bounce. It's still in play. And Diaz winds up at second with a double. Clearly now to Storm Davis. And very quickly, very quickly, action begins in the Baltimore bullpen. Curveball that was hit well down the left field line. Hit hard enough so that Todd Cruz didn't have a chance to get to it. So a double to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning and Avante Jesus. Fly to center in the third inning. Davis started the game by retiring the first 10. Gave up a run in the fourth, but then got gross to hit into a double play to escape further damage. Spread foul. You could definitely tell that He's Jay to... Jesus is trying to go to right field to get the runner over. Right. I think it's a little too early in the game, fifth inning, to be playing for one run just to tie. John Denny has shown that he's settled down. He's starting to pitch real good ball. Had a one, two, three inning last last inning, and uh, I don't think there's any thoughts of Paulo and pinch hitting in this situation. Well, they had stirred in the bullpen. Now they've sat down again. Again, De Jesus tries to advance the runner, but can't, and the count is 0-2. Harold, B. We Reese. A little bad. Colonel. It's not right. One mean, of the great shortstops of all time. Should one be of, in the Hall of Fame. One of one of my heroes when I was young. Well, and mainly because his name was Pee Wee. You mean you're <laughs> younger than Harold? Yes, I am. He had extensive knee surgery. Very difficult time with it, but he's really on the road back. Looks great. The pitch is high, and Dempsey throws down a second on a set play with Ripken cutting in back of the bag. The thing that makes Dempsey so great, I discussed it with Reggie yesterday, is the quickness of his release. He gets rid of the ball the way Joe Willie Namath used to, and it's gone. And they both had pretty good arms. Yes. One-two pitch coming to De Jesus. He goes to the other side, and Murray makes the catch, but that's all, as Diaz wasn't straying very far off second and gets back. So Yvonne had the right idea, but couldn't deliver. Well, that was a good piece of base running by Bo Diaz. There's a lot of ball players when that ball came off mm -hmm. the bat would have taken that three or four extra steps. 
He hits it right down the first baseline. Bo can take his time because if that ball goes down the right field line fair, he can walk home. So there's no sense in taking that one or two extra steps and getting yourself picked off at second base. Now Denny at the plate, and that one gets by Dempsey. So of all things now, Diaz goes to third. Got to love this game. The guy goes up there to try to hit the ball to the right side, can't get him over. The runner is still at second. Next thing you know, the ball gets away from the catcher. And DeJesus did everything he was supposed to do to try to get it. This has to be a pass ball. And what has to happen, I think, uh, is they, there was a cross-up in signs. It didn't look like Dempsey uh, was looking for a fastball right there. Now Altabelli goes to the mound, and they have scored at a wild pitch. Scored at a wild pitch. Eh? They have. I was wrong again. Well, that, that's really borderline. Normally, the rule of thumb is if it bounces first, they'll score at a wild pitch, otherwise uh, pass ball, and that was uh, right on the edge. Yeah, but that's another reason I'm sitting up here in the booth. No, it's not. <laughs> you can't yeah, everybody, be wrong on everybody has their opinion. <laughs> Yeah, it's so easy to second guess. There's Sammy Stewart up now throwing in the bullpen. In the meantime, they second guessed Paul Owens to death after last night's game. Nobody said the guy had LaFay properly placed in the lineup when he doubled and knocked in the Phillies run. Denny is a tremendous bunter, and it's uh, illustrated right there. 17 sacrifice punch. The infield is in. What about the possibility of a squeeze here? Definitely a possibility to squeeze, and that's one of the reasons I think Joe Altabelli went out there. But he does, and he goes to left field on a line, and it's not caught, but Diaz has to scramble home, and the throw hits him. So he is safe. Denny is on his way to second. The throw from Davis gets by Dower and is backed up by Bumbley. break for the Phillies on a ball that Lowenstein had trouble with in left field. Diaz was tagging. Now, Bo is not a fast runner. Watch again from high above and see how the play develops here. Look how close the umpire is, and he called it right away. John knew he still had a chance at home plate, and it was a perfect throw. But this is one of the plays where the manager wants somebody to grab the ball and stick it in his pocket because it looks like the base runner is just going to keep going. Once again, and if Diaz is tagging, chances are if the catch is made, he doesn't come here. But at short hop, then he starts to come, and then he's lucky that the ball hits him. And Davis picks it up, and his throw is alertly backed up by Bumbrey to prevent any further advance. So it's a single, and it's an error. Charge to the left fielder, Lowenstein, which would mean no run batted in. It's the way they've scored it. would be on Storm Davis. The throw hitting the base runner. Morgan is the batter. Morgan has struck out and flied out. The word from the score now, I'll give you in a moment, is they will give him a run batted in, in fact, and contend that Denny advances on the error because the ball hit. Diaz sliding in. And that's right. Morgan takes outside. But there, Lowenstein is credited with an error on a perfect throw to the home plate. The runner just got there an instant before the ball. And someone said once that they should have a column for team errors, and that's the type of play where it would, should go in. Strike to Morgan. Meanwhile, the game tied 2-2. See right here that Morgan didn't like this call. Looked a little high. I'm not sure he's wrong. Denny is at second. And Morgan hits it down to Murray at first. Eddie makes the play himself. And on the play, Denny advances to third. So two down. And here comes Pete Rose. And they're getting good wood on the ball off of Storm Davis now. and struck out and singled. Scored the Philadelphia run in the fourth inning, their first run. Denning at third, two down. 
one late at a fastball. This man finds so many ways to beat you. Well, you pointed it out with his instinctive base running on the Mike Schmidt pop that fell among three players. Looks the field over, can hit in all places. And you can see that he's shortened up that swing on, on this mm -hmm. bat, just trying to make contact and hit the ball to the left field. Hit a breaking ball last time. Up. One ball, two strikes to count. Meanwhile, there are three balloons floating around in left field, and they haven't stopped play to take them off the playing area. Two balls, two strikes on Rose. Looks to me like Storm Davis is reaching way back now to try to keep that fastball over 90 miles an hour. To left center field, a base hit, and it gets by Bumbrey. Rose around second, around first, and into second as Denny scores. It's three to two. He is answering back for being benched last night. He gets his opportunity, and professional that he is, he comes through. What a remarkable, intense competitor. Here it is again. High fastball hitter, we said earlier, and that's what it was. And he, now, there's an AstroTurf bounce, and I just don't see how they can give a fella an error on that play. Uh, it should be scored as a double. That's the way I marked it. I don't care what the score it does. In the meantime, you knew it. He was going in that direction. He just punched that ball out there. He has always taken what he's been given. You're going to fetch him away as a left-handed batter? He'll go there with you. Three to two. Philadelphia on top as Mike Schmidt comes up. Schmidt has struck out and singled. Rose was given a double, no error on the play. What interests me is the way they're staying with Davis, and Stewart has stopped warming up. It looked like, well, Stewart's ready. That's why he stopped warming up. He was up uh, the inning before, and he's ready to come in the ball game. But yes, it seems like he's staying with, St uh, with uh, Storm Davis just a little bit too long. Mike Schmidt singled in the fourth inning to snap an 0 for 13. Rose at second. And it's hit in the air to left center field. Ripken out, Lowenstein in. Lowenstein fighting it and having trouble with the sun, but staying with it to make the catch. So the Phillies here in the fifth inning come up with a couple of runs. Three hits, there was an error. And a man left on. An isolated look now at Lowenstein's throw hitting Diaz, who comes in to score the tying run. So the Phillies on top as they have battled from behind, and we'll be right back after this word from your local station. Tomorrow. She's an ex-hooker. Codename Black Widow. I'd like to see you. Mark falls for a deadly lady. You're right, sir. And he's next on her list. Next guy comes on to you. He's a dead man. Hardcastle and McCormick. So what are you doing with this? Tomorrow at 8. We ask French mineral water experts to taste new Arrowhead Sparkling Mountain Spring Water. Magnifique. Arrowhead sparkling bubbles with a distinctive taste Delicieux. that could only come from the mountain springs of California. Merveilleux. Gentlemen? Perfect. Perfect. One problem. We can't get it over here. New Arrowhead sparkling mountain spring water. You'll only find it in California. Confidence comes with this uniform. And as a Marine, you earn that confidence by doing a tough job with skill and daring. That's something to be proud of. You develop it by working on a unique team that succeeds where others might fail. A team respected around the world. 
It's a confidence that comes from knowing nothing is impossible if you're prepared to do it. Find out. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. Sean Connery, The Real Bond, tonight at 7. Osebio Pedroza in his 17th title defense takes on gutsy Jose Caba, the WBA World Featherweight Championship when ABC's Wide World of Sports returns next Saturday. So we go to the sixth inning. Baltimore scored twice in the fourth, and then the Phillips came back with one in the bottom of the fourth, two in the fifth. And thus it is three to two Philadelphia here in game four as Murray takes outside. You notice Al in baseball how often it is when you fail to score a runner from third with less than two out it comes back to haunt you. That's what the birds did. In the inning where they scored there too. Murray hits a fly ball to center field. Gross shading his eyes from the sun makes the catch. And the uh, chant Eddie 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 from the Philadelphia fans escorts Murray back to the dugout. Well, I can tell you this. I know Eddie Murray, and he is feeling better about himself because he knows he's swinging better. He may yet hit one out today. Lowenstein, flight out, struck out. 0-1 oh, the count. It's going to get a little tougher for the hitters now because the shadow line is right back of the plate. There and it Den is. And Denny has much better location of his fastball than he did a few innings back. And curveball. Change there in the count, one and one. He's tempting him with the fastball and trying to throw the breaking ball and off speed pitches for strikes. One and two now. And got that one right on the corner. Beautiful, wasn't it? Get to see it again. It's tailing away from the left-handed hitter. Got the front part of the plate. The center field for a base hit. So he threw an off-speed pitch, a breaking ball, and Lowenstein waited on that one. Now we've run into a hit-and-run situation with one of the better hit-and-run men at the plate in the American League and Richie Dower. This is the man who knocked in the birds two runs with a right field single opposite field. Dower is two for 13 of the series so keep an eye on Lowenstein as it's wrapped foul outside third. On one. If they do put on a hit and run I'd like to explain that Richie Dower does not try to pick there's Lee May. He oh. did an awful lot of driving and runs for me. And but that man drove in a few runs for you. That's didn't he? who I'm talking about, Lee May. Right. And uh, Richie will not try to pick a hole second base or shortstop. He'll just try to get the bat on the ball and hit it hard. No balls, two strikes to count. There was an evidence. Looking to go to right field. Yes, and uh, if you were noticing on this split screenshot, uh, John Lowenstein, the first base, is giving no indication that he might be running. We'll watch him here. One ball, two strikes. Short lead, a good base runner that's thinking about stealing bases will try to get all the way up to the turf, have one foot at least off, off of the dirt. Denny taking a lot of time between pitches here, uncharacteristic of him. That's grounded fair by third, and Matthews will have to charge in to make the play. They will still hold the runner at third, as Cal Ripken put out the stop sign for Lowenstein, and Dower winds up with a double. So the Birds on their way back with runners at second and third. If Ripken had decided to let him go, it was going to be a close play at home plate. I believe he would have made it. I question what Cal did there. Well, this ball here came back into the center of field. Lowenstein, as he rounded second, had intentions of going, but Gary Matthews comes in pretty quick. And that's about the, as tough a play as a left fielder can possibly have. As you see it again, Matthews, number one, has to think that maybe it won't hit the railing and he has to go down into the corner and then of course uh, he has no option 
he has to protect against that and Karam's back out as Osteen visits the mound and in the bullpen Ron Reed is heating up now a decision to be made by Al Tabelli. Meanwhile, following this one, a reminder, stay tuned, number one ranked Nebraska in action against Missouri. So you'll have a chance to watch the number one team in the country, the Cornhuskers, following game four of the World Series. Nebraska with the number one offense in the country. Meanwhile, Osteen has visited the mound, and Joe Nolan has come out of the Philadelphia, of the Baltimore dugout, and there he is, the other catcher. He had been platoon somewhat with Dempsey during the regular season, and he will bat here for Cruz in the sixth inning. I suspect that Joe may turn to what you suggested a few days ago, Earl. Move Rich Dowell to third and put Sakat at second. No? Nope. Yes, yes, there's a good chance of that. I'm thinking here that uh, Baltimore only has two catchers, and uh, he's using Joe Nolan in a pinch hit situation here. I'm wondering if. To get a Glenn walk, Sicano as well. might have to go behind the plate. Well, they're going to walk Nolan. If anything should happen to Dempsey, that's exactly what has to happen, and that's happened this year. And as you recall, it was Sakata who was catching one night against Toronto and wound up hitting a home run to win the game. As Singleton now comes out to bat for Dempsey, so with the bases loaded, they will go to the bench. That will take Dempsey out of the game, and of course Nolan will then stay in the game to do the catching. Is he? Moves down to first base after drawing the intentional walk. Well, I'll give you, tell you this: Joe is making his moves and making them quickly. He's not waiting. No, he's not. He knows too. I mean, this is the time. I guess you're going to make that move because uh, the way Denny is pitching right now, he may be on the ropes a little bit. You don't want to get too deep because then you know Mr. Holland's going to be in there. This well, game has become different from the prior games. This game is a roller coaster affair with an ebb and flow to it. And a lot of pressure situations, and I think both the purists and the uh, casual fan can enjoy it. Well, Joe anticipated a possible base on balls in that situation, intentional base on balls. He sent Joe Nolan up to the plate to hit if they pitch to him, but saved Kenny Singleton, a switch hitter, to come up with the bases loaded if they did walk him. Who is a much better hitter from the left side than he is from the right side. The one thing that would worry me would be being down to one legitimate catcher. And he, this guy has power. Infield looking for the double play. Up and into Singleton. If you don't follow the game that closely, Singleton is a regular for Baltimore, but he's the designated hitter. And the DH is only used in the series in the even numbered years. Thus, he's been relegated to the bench. Two and oh the count with the bases loaded. As you said, our Joe Altabelli's taking his shot early. But that's the ball game out on the bases. And that's ball three. Three balls and no strikes. And so Denny is a pitch away from walking it, the tying run. You give him the green light here? No, I wouldn't. No. Nope. Kenny's got a good eye and he can be trusted. To a 99 walks this strike. year. And that's ball four. So Singleton walks and Lowenstein trots in to tie the game. And the bases are still loaded, and now they're going to pinch hit for Storm Davis, apparently. I give Alta Belly all the credit in the world. That's a, I tell you, that's a pretty close call right there on that pitch. Denny annoyed. And now they'll take Davis out, and that's uh, John Shelby in your picture right there putting the batting helmet on. The switch hitting outfielder who platoons with Bumbry. He'll come up here and uh, a look into the Philadelphia dugout. Of course, if they're going to make the move, you always want the pinch hitter to be announced first so that he is officially in the game. Sammy Stewart throwing in the bullpen. Meanwhile, also a pinch runner coming out as Len Sakata goes down to first base to run for Singleton. So and there is the only reserve infielder. And your move, uh, 
that you mentioned before, if Sakata going to second and Dower going to third, is what they're going to do, Al. So they'll be down to their only catcher. Their only catchers, actually, both in the game at the same time. Nolan will be back at the plate with the emergency catcher, Sakata, staying in. So Shelby coming up with the bases loaded. Now Owens will make his move. He wanted to wait until Shelby was officially announced. That puts him in the game and takes Davis out. Here comes Owens. This being the second Philadelphia visit of the inning means he has to go to the bullpen. He also had Hernandez throwing, and the call does go out for Willie, who was up alongside Reed. And he'll come in, and we'll see about Shelby whether he'll stay in. He's a switch hitter. 3-3 in the sixth. We'll be right back. For years now, we've been kidding Jim here about his eyesight. The fact is that Jim has the eyes of an eagle. Thanks, Boog. <laughs> Why, well, he's one of the first guys to spot light beer from Miller. Saw right away that light tastes great, and it's less filling. Sure. All you have to do is read the label. It says light has one-third less calories than a regular beer. I think you want this, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. As I was saying, it's as plain as the nose on your face. I like beer from Miller. Everything thing. you always wanted in a beer, and less. Oh, I don't believe this. What keeps America going on a freezing day? Presto! What brings football fans up to Green Bay? Presto! A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. That's the Prestone difference. Now go with Prestone and save. Buy two gallons right now and we'll send you $2 back by mail. America saves with Prestone. What's behind the pepper pizzazz? See Lee? Wee Lee? Where'd he get the snap that he has? See Lee? Really? What's behind that Sealy Posturepedic feeling? Layers of luxurious comfort and a unique back support system designed in cooperation with orthopedic surgeons. So you wake up feeling really. Their energy's revealing that Sealy Posturepedic feeling. Sealy, really. Jennings, intelligent. Yes, he is smart, but he couldn't do what he does if he weren't. ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. The difference can be distinguished. A note about tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern time, live coverage of the Ryder Cup golf matches, and that will precede Game 5. Now, the starting time, our broadcast time for Game 5 tomorrow, right there, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific time tomorrow for Game 5 of the World Series. As you look at Willie Hernandez coming in, you got to give it to Alabella. He's proved he's not afraid to make his moves early. And I'll tell you what's going through Joe's mind right now. He leaves Shelby up. He's a switch hitter, as we pointed out. Gets up there righty. He wants to get to Bumbrey because he's got Dan Ford ready to put in for out. Right? Couldn't be said any better. He's really rooting for Shelby to get on. Shelby will stay in the ball game and add defense if he should get out in front. Infield at double play depth as Shelby takes up and away ball one. So the third consecutive pinch hitter utilized by Altabelli. Nolan hit for Cruz. Singleton battled for Dempsey. Shelby hitting here with the bases loaded and one out. Score tie 3-3. And that's hit high in the air to deep left field. Gary Matthews goes all the way back, leaps up, and makes the catch somehow. Dower tags and comes in to score. On a sacrifice fly and a tremendous catch by Gary Matthews fighting the sun as well as the wall. I'll tell you, you said every fly ball with Gary is an adventure. And Gary said, when I talked to him about it, I get the job done and I give them a show. Look at the perfect timing of that leap. Perfect timing. He is not the most graceful outfielder you'll ever see. You've watched him catch routine fly balls in the series in his very unorthodox and distinct fashion. But as he says, he gets it done. And that's a great catch, especially under the circumstances. It saves at least one run and maybe two more. So it's 4-3 Baltimore on a sacrifice fly with two down now. And here comes Mr. Ford, exactly as we expected. Sakata, the pinch runner at first. 
And you saw Nolan at second, and so Ford comes up, and this is the fourth consecutive pinch hitter utilized by Al Cabelli. And that ties a World Series record. Meantime, in this topsy-turvy game, the Birds in front, four to three. This is starting to shape up. I was thinking back a couple of years ago. Remember game four in Los Angeles between the Dodgers and the Yankees? Eight to seven, the Dodgers won it. And here comes Owens again, so they forced his hand as he will probably now go to the bullpen and call in Ron Reed. But the point is, his hand was forced and it wastes Hernandez. You agree? And one of the reasons that Joe Altabelli sent Dan Ford up in place of Gary Renicki in this situation is just what's happening now. Dan Ford has batted off of more right-handers this year than Gary Renicki has. So Ron Reed, the 40-year-old, six-foot-six-inch right-hander, comes in from the bullpen. Hernandez departs. Baltimore leading 4-3, and we'll be right back. You're the umpire, as in television presents You Make the Call. Here's an old one for you. A ball is hit to the shortstop. His throw beats the runner to first and lodges in the crook of the first baseman's elbow. Is the runner out? You make the call. Finding the best video game system is a tough game to win. Who plays the most games? The best-selling games. In Television 2, add the new system changer and play all Atari 2600 games. The most games, the best-selling games, like Hubert. Enduro. Burger Time. In Television 2 has the most going for it. More games than Atari and Coleco. Over 430 games. Get in Television 2. It's got the most going for it. Although this difficult play looks easy, a catch is only legal if the fielder has possession of the ball in his hand or glove. So if you said the runner was safe, then you made the right call. Working hard against the clock could mean perspiration on Gillette announces the new improved right guard stick, so potent it destroys odor-causing bacteria for up to 24 hours. When the cannon sounds, 17,000 people will take the first steps of what will feel like a lifetime. The New York City Marathon, live October 23rd on ABC. So Ron Reed, who at one time played basketball with the Detroit Pistons, comes in here with runners at first and second and two down in the sixth inning. That's Joe Nolan at second base and Len Sakata at first. And Dan Ford pinch hitting for Al Bubbery at the plate. Not much difference there. Very point Earl made. Ford is an effective hitter. Baltimore against, on top, 4 3. Against both style pitches. Southpaw and Orthodox. Two on, two out in the top of the sixth inning. One and the count. Reed was complaining in the clubhouse of not being used enough. Well, he's going to get his shot now. Reed at six foot six to six foot seven. Sidearm delivery is tough on right-handed hitters, but Ford never gave an inch on that pitch. That low home shot gives you an idea now with a pitcher and the background bathed in sunlight and the batter standing there in the shade. Physically, he's a reminder, Al, of Gene Conley. You remember that side wheeling right in. Six feet eight, Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. I batted off of him. Looked like he was handing you the ball <laughs> or handing it to the catcher because I never hit it. Conley, a two-sport man like Reed, down the way. One and two, the count. Oh, the Phils owe a lot to Gary Matthews. That great leaping jump, the perfect timing, has kept this game close. That's exactly right. Could have got away right there. Three runs could have scored if that ball comes off the wall. Two balls, two strikes. And that's strike three on a foul 
tip. He couldn't get his bat out of the way, and the foul tip is held by the catcher. As Gary Matthews comes in, he keeps him close. It's 4-3 in the middle of the sixth inning, and we'll go out with another look at that great play by Gary. Here comes the all-time favorite on a sesame seed bun. He's McDonald's Big Mac. He's always been number one. The leader of the pack, McDonald's Great Big Mac. Two pure beef patties, lettuce pickles going in. Special sauce is a hit, gotta give him a spin. Mellow cheese melting down, down. He's at the top of the charts, all over town. Leader of the pack. Chevy Tuck taking charge. Earth. Keep moving, moving. S10 Laser. Wind. Keep storming, storming. S10 Laser. Fire. Nothing like the thrill of a tough Chevy S10 Blazer. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Tomorrow, Stallone. This time he's fighting for his life. I'm gonna kill that stinking pig. Nighthawks. Tomorrow, starting at nine. Friendly discretion advised. And of course, when you use four pinch hitters in an inning, you make a lot of changes in the bottom of the inning. So you saw Joe Nolan. He stays in to catch, and that's Shelby in center field. He pinch hit for Davis. And there is Len Sakata, who pinch ran for Singleton at second base. And what they've also done, Rich Dower stays in the game and moves over to third. And a new pitcher for the Orioles as well. As out of the bullpen comes Sammy Stewart. So, Nolan bats seven. Sakata hits eighth. Shelby bats ninth. And Stewart hits in the leadoff spot. Ford batting for Bumpery struck out in that spot to end the top of the sixth inning. And now you have to hope that Joe, uh, Joe Alibelli's hoping that the Baltimore pitching staff can hold him because he's used most of his players. He still has Gary Renicki on the bench. And... Uh, but Ayala. most of his moves are gone. Gary, uh, Gary Renicki and Benny Ayala, but most of his moves are gone. And he also has a fellow by the name of Tito Landrum, who has become a mythological figure in Baltimore <laughs> with the home run last Saturday in Chicago. LaFay takes a strike as we start the bottom of the sixth inning. Baltimore on top, four to three. What a pickup this kid has been for the Phils. Change and in the air to center field. Shelby coming in. One away. And here comes Gary Matthews. Great postseason for Matthews, both offensively, of course, with four home runs. And this play right here, it was a sacrifice fly, but it's the key play in the inning because it kept Philadelphia in the game. As I mentioned before, does he have a wall to fight? He's got a leap and time it perfectly. He's looking basically into the sun. The center field, and Shelby is there, and he's having trouble with the sun. Base hit. It's questionable whether that ball could have been caught or not, but he had no chance once it got in the sun. So the time goes aboard with one out here in the sixth inning. It looked like Shelby saw it initially, and then couldn't pick it up and at this point as you can see right there fielding his eyes playing it on the bounce so Matthews is aboard and Greg Gross is the batter Sammy Stewart last night pitching brilliantly faced six men struck out three did not face a left-handed hitter last night but he faced one, Morgan, and he walked him. A strike here. 
and one. Matthews at first, one away. Just outside, one and one. Matthews goes, and it's fouled away, so they send him, but he'll have to come back. And playing him to left field, Lund Sakata, the second baseman, was covering second, leaving a big hole between first and second base. Crowd today at Veterans Stadium is 66,947, not only the largest crowd in the history of the stadium, most people ever watch a baseball game in the state of Pennsylvania. And they're seeing a real good baseball game. Two balls, two strikes. Bullpen has been scintillating for Baltimore, both in the playoffs and the series. Sammy Stewart worked last night. To me, he doesn't look quite as sharp as he did last night. Matthews goes again, and that's lined to center field, and Shelby is there to make the catch, and Matt, who is down at second, retreats to first. So everything going in Shelby's direction in the inning. Two out, Matthews at first base. And Bo Diaz will be the hitter. Four runs, seven hits, one error for Baltimore. Three runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Phils. Diaz, four for 11 in the series. He's been a solid, tough cookie in this series. Yes, he has. A strike, four for 11, plus he was the man who was robbed on that tremendous catch by Lowenstein. Well, Lowenstein. well, they had Matthews running with one out, so there's a chance that he might be running with two out. Stewart thinking exactly that. Nolan now doing the catching doesn't have the arm that Dempsey does either. Oh, the release. Oh, and two. With two strikes, a pitcher might allow that runner at first just a little bit better jump also because he knows if he can get a good pitch in the right spot at home plate, it's strike three. Token throw and a ball. Oh, ball. That's a ball. Yep. Steve Palermo, an American League umpire, calling it. Here it is. Sammy Stewart is Al set. Just a token throw. Seemed to get his feet caught in the rubber when he went over there. Took him an extra step. Critical Steve Palermo mistake. jumped right on it and called it. Meanwhile, out the belly is coming out and uh, also Nolan visiting the mound and now most of the infield gathers around. Well with that move to first base he certainly wasn't trying to deceive the runner. He was just running him back. Aaron mechanics. Right now they'd be talking about what they want to do with Diaz and if they'd rather pitch to Ivan De Jesus. But the count is 0-2. We mentioned, by the way, uh, our best wishes for Donald Davidson. They had a streamer up here earlier. Uh, we just saw yeah. a streamer from a plane go all the way Philly. Right, but there was one earlier which was Donald, a speedy recovery. That's a foul tip. Owen to the count. We'd see some moves if Joe well, Nolan happens to catch one on the hand and not able to catch. 
throwing out of the sun into the shadows this time of day. It's especially tough to see a hard thrower, and it's hard to pick up the spin on breaking pitches. It's almost impossible to pick up the spin on a breaking ball. Going to the count. What's not pointed out a lot, though, everybody talks about conditions like this, what it means for the hitter. You know who it's tough for, too? The umpire. That's true. Outside. They won't normally admit it, but uh, you get the fellas in a casual moment, and they'll be telling you, hey, it's pretty tough for us as well. Oh, they'll admit it. Guy like Russ Getz, not working the series, he'll tell you. One ball, two strikes the count. They do have a mask and a chest protector, though, and the hitter doesn't. Cogent point. Strike three. Sunlight, shadow, day, night. No doubt about that call by Pulley. No runs and a hit in the sixth inning. And a man left on as you watch Stewart strike out Diaz and we'll go to the seventh for three Baltimore back after this word from your local stations. Tonight, the heat's coming down in Chinatown for T.J. Hooker. We're the targets. Then Jamie Farr goes overboard for Heather Locklear on the love boat. Wow. And a working girl's search for love traps Rourke under her spell, Fantasy Island. Tonight, all starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. What if all your choices were taken away? One choice is no choice. Today, many gas stations are saying no to your choices. Well, they're saying no. Chevron says yes. Yes to self-serve prices. Yes to cash discounts. And that means yes to double savings. Chevron says yes to our credit card, too. Chevron's got a whole station full of yeses. Yes, we have. Yes, we will. Yes, we do. Yes, we care. Chevron. Others say no. Chevron says yes. The airline with one of the most modern fleets in all the world still believes in the romance of travel. Singapore girl, you're a great way to fly. Go where the girls are tonight at 7.30. Don't miss it. Unbeaten Nebraska, the number one team in the nation, battles the upset-minded Missouri Tigers. ABC's NCAA College Football, next. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, and Earl Weaver in Philadelphia, game four of the 1983 World Series. Four, three Orioles who lead in the series two games to one. And Ron Reed ready to work in the top of the seventh inning. The two, three, and four spots for Baltimore. That's Dwyer, Ripken, and Murray. Dwyer, one for three today, looks at a strike. One, one. Amazing thing about the Baltimore lineup. They now have five left-handed hitters in the lineup, counting two switch hitters against right-handed pitching. Toward the gap in left center field for a base hit, maybe more. Cut off deep by Matthews. Dwyer is on his way to second, and Gary Stroh is not in time. Second hit for Dwyer today. A double to the gap to begin things here in the seventh inning. In effect, we're going to get to see this again. Dwyer goes with the low outside fastball into left center field, an easy stand-up double. And we might expect to see Holland. I don't know if Paul Owens would use him if he's behind, but if he comes in, two of the, those left-handed hitters can turn around, and he still has three right-handed hitters on the bench. <laughs> you don't know this team, do you? <laughs> Cal Ripken is one for three today. Three for 13 in the World Series. Half swing, he came around. But of course, that's the strength of this Baltimore team. They've got people coming at you all ways. Reggie dwelt on that in the very opening pregame show. Who are these people that keep coming from nowhere? One and one to count.
Dwyer at second base and no one out in the seventh inning. One and two. There's that outside pitch again that he chased. It seems to be a, a foot outside. He tried to go with it, but it's just too far out there from where he's standing. And that's called strike three. And he set him up for that. Over the outside corner. Perfect pitch right here. Doubly tough, of course, under the lighting conditions. It'll get a lot better when that shadow moves behind the pitcher's mound towards center field. Eddie Murray, one for three. Now two for 15 in the series. One and other count. Seems to be the least bit. Eddie Murray seems to be the least bit more selective in this game than he was in the first. Three. I think he's swinging much better. Don't you, Ridge? A word from Reggie in a moment here. He's, sw he's swinging the bat a lot better right now. He's looking at the ball. When you see a guy start taking pitches and be under control, it is a good sign. He had a good swing the first time up, got a base hit. I'm sure he's starting to feel a little more comfortable. That's outside. Ball three, and Reed slipped off the mound. Three and all the count. First base is open here. Lowenstein is on deck. Claude Osteen foreground and Paul Owens. Osteen's input, of course, and then in not regard to the pitchers. Then not in the picture, Bobby Wine, ever and, present. And Dave Bristol and the, the four comprise what they call the gang of four here. So Murray walks. There is Bobby Wine now in the picture. Wine, uh, the consultant on strategy, and Larry Anderson, who worked in game two, is in the bullpen. As John Lowenstein stands in. One for three today. Oh, and one. He was looking for that pitch. Took a good cut. Excellent swing. John hits a fastball real good, both the high fastball and the low fastball, and he's not afraid to look for breaking balls. That's why he does such a great job for the Baltimore Orioles. The 0 1 to Lowenstein is high. One ball and one strike. Orioles on top, 4 3 in the seventh inning. One out, runners at first and second. Out straight back. One and two. Five second pause here to allow our local stations to identify themselves. One ball, two strikes the count on Lowenstein with one out, runners at first and second. And the count now even at two and two. count is full. All right, Earl, do you send the runners here? Full count, one out? Well, I wouldn't with a left-handed hitter up. Gives a, if, if John should miss the ball, it gives the catcher an easy throw to third base and your inning would be over. So Dwyer at second, Murray at first. The runners do not go, and Lowenstein strikes out. Big, big pitch. And so Reed has come in he has struck out three got four to end the six then he gave up the double here to Dwyer in the seventh struck Ripken out walked Murray strikes Lowenstein out and Rich Doward singled in the fourth inning to drive in two doubled in the sixth inning in the middle of the two run rally 
We might have overdone the shadows, but this fellow's going to be touch for, uh, tough for Rich Dower. Uh, ball coming out of the shadows, sidearm and right-hander. Rich has a tendency to bail just a little bit. And by bailing, I mean step toward third base. All and one to count. Into the bucket to use the old time That's phrase. the old time phrase. Haven't heard in a long time. It's what they used to do against Dick Merriwell. If Reed gets the ball in the wrong spot, though, Rich might be able to do something with it. He did. He stepped into the bucket all right, but he also lines at the center for a base hit. And the throw coming in is not in time from Gross. It'll be interesting when we see it again because he does exactly what Earl says. He steps into the bucket, but he hits it back through the middle, and Baltimore now leads 5-3. He got himself a high fastball on the inside of the plate and drove it right back through the middle. Close play at home plate. Uh, uh, Dwyer is giving it everything he's got and barely slides in. Dave. So five to three, Baltimore. And now Nolan is the batter with two out. Reed is due to bat second in the bottom of the inning. So he'll be coming out. As Nolan swings late, 0 and 1. And the lineup that El Tabelli has in there now can really be tough on right-handed pitching. One and one. Murray at second. And Dower, big day, three hits, three runs batted in and scored a run in the sixth. The runner at first. One one pitch missing away. Ball two. Two and one to count. By not running on that three and two pitch, they gave Dower a chance to get to the plate and it paid off. Mm -hmm. Sounded like it might hit the bat, no? Or the shin guard, maybe, of Diaz. I thought it hit the bat. It did, yeah. Yep. There is the call from Pulley. Two and two of the count. Right there. Nolan couldn't get it out of the way. Good picture of it there. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up to Nolan. Little looper, shallow left field, tough play to Jesus. Makes the catch and saves a run. The lead escapes, but another run for Baltimore in the seventh and after six and a half. Five to three, Orioles. Not long ago, after a visit to the United States, Internationally famous wine expert Christopher Stevens arrived at his home in France. At an elaborate dinner to celebrate his return, he offered his guests a special burgundy he had discovered, one of America's most sought after red wines. Bon. On hearing the wine complimented by his guests, he asked them to guess what it cost. They agreed the wine was very well made and presumed a wine of such yeah. quality would cost at least 65 65. or 70 francs 70. or between eight and ten dollars how much did the special american wine really cost you already know because it's the same wine you're probably drinking now the best liked red wine ever made in america the hearty burgundy of ernest and julio gallo from america's premier vintners all the best The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Sunday. Codename Black Widow. Every man she touches dies. Oh, I'd like to see you. And Hardcastle and McCormick are next on her list. Sunday after the World Series. Going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Baltimore, five runs, nine hits, and one error. Phillies, three runs, seven hits, and no errors. And Scotty McGregor, whom you just saw in that picture, 
will be the starting pitcher tomorrow in game five. Let me tell you, De Jesus at the plate made a very big play there on that inning ending catch, and that was a much more difficult play than it might have looked. People that have never played baseball don't know how hard that play is directly over your head. A strike, and in particular, under those circumstances, it was a major play, saving a run here. Philadelphia down by two. No balls, two strikes to count. Von Hayes is on deck. He will be pinch hitting for Ron Reed. Well, it's turned out the Matthews play and that play by De Jesus has kept the Phillies very much in this game. Took something off it, and De Jesus goes down swinging. It's almost unfair under circumstances like these. Sunlight bathing the backdrop and the batter at the plate for a guy like Sammy Stewart who can throw so hard to take something off of it. Oh, how hard that makes it. You're so right about that, Al. Tippy Martinez will start to throw in the Oriole bullpen. That's your new. Hayes fouling it away. 0-1. Crowd very quiet right now, and uh, it figures, of course. Their team down two games to one, and trailing five to three. Of course, if Baltimore wins, then everybody will. They'll go back right, to 79. Well, they'll write about to 79, exactly. Talk about when Earl Weaver had lead. three pitchers in a row to go with. Up three games to one, Flanagan, Flanagan Palmer, and McGregor. McGregor. Fellow who might get a chance to clinch it tomorrow if things stay like they are. Two and one. And the Phillies will go out tonight and try to make a trade for Stargell. This game isn't over. Not yet. Not by a long shot. You're 100% right there. Hope this doesn't offend you, Howard, but you can't run out the clock in this game. Got to give everybody their due chance. Why would it offend you? It wouldn't offend you. I know that wouldn't affect you. What you're telling me is this game has a condition to it, not being controlled by the clock that doesn't attach. To That's what I was score. trying to say. 2-2 two -two pitch is low and outside. It's also the one sport the Chicago Tribune pointed out the other day. It's the yeah. only sport where the defense has the ball. Yep. <laughs> Charles, Charles Hudson. Hudson. Yep. Rookie pitcher, he'll go tomorrow. Interesting thing happening at his school. Fouled away. Prairie View a and &M. I wonder if it's going to be a trend of the black colleges in the South. Father and son, Pete Rose. Yeah. Young Rose feels a lot better today, even though they're losing right now than oh, they sure. did yesterday. Trend I'm talking about, Al, is Charles Hudson had a white teammate at Prairie View A&M. They are recruiting white athletes there, and they apparently are undertaking a whole program of integration. Very interesting story. Hayes hits it down to Murray at first base, and Eddie makes the play himself. So Hayes grounds out weakly, and with two down here in the seventh inning, it'll bring Joe Morgan to the plate as the Phillies go to the top of the order. Positive, constructive story. I'm doing a piece on it for Sportsbeat. Talk to Charles about it. Sportsbeat returns Windsor in a couple of weeks. Right. Oh, and one. The count on Morgan. Larry Anderson has already warmed up for the Phillies. So he'll be coming on. Okay, let's go. Mexico with Phillies. One and one. First pitch to Joe Morgan was good change. Next one a fastball inside. Good fastball right there. One and two. And then a fastball on the outside. Ninety miles an hour. Two out. Bases empty. Bottom of the seventh inning. Sammy Stewart had a great. 
second half. He didn't have a real good first half. So yeah, they were booing him with regularity in Baltimore early on. Right now, we may be at the peak point of poor visibility for the batter. Right now. Right now. Explain why, Earl. Well, the shadows have almost reached the pitcher. Uh, we've said before, even though it was closer to the hitter, that the ball comes out of the sunlight. You, you can't see the spin on it. And now there's a double shadow right on cover. This is a shadow from the lights. The other heavy shadow is the shadow from the stands. And a 3-2 to Morgan is popped up. Shallow right center field. And it's Shelby coming in. He takes charge and makes the catch. So three up and three down to the eighth inning we go. Orioles five. Phillies three. It's harvest time in California, Sonoma, and Napa counties. The finest wine-growing regions in the world. No land produces better grapes. No grapes produce better wines. And each year, the specially selected harvest from Sonoma and Napa counties goes more to one winery than to any other. To the award-winning winery of Ernest and Julio Gallo. From the finest wine-growing regions in the world. All the best. This is Mr. Goodwrench. Did you know the spark plugs in your GM car or truck make 8,000 explosions a minute? And each explosion depends on an exact amount of gasoline and air to make your car or truck perform right. So to make sure all those explosions happen precisely, get a professional tune-up by Mr. Goodwrench. We have quality GM parts, equipment, and training available. It's another of Mr. Goodwrench's good ways. To keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Shooting on location is a real challenge. But how good a picture is can depend on how good the paper is it's printed on. That's why the photographers I know use Kodak paper, not just for the pictures we earn our living with, but for personal pictures, like these. Because what a picture says on the back says a lot about how it looks on the front. Kodak paper. The only way to be sure you get it is to ask for it at a retailer displaying this new sign. And that follows, of course, out to Columbia, Missouri, where Nebraska, number one, takes on the Tigers. College football following the game. Wonder if we can make it, Al Well, no, we'll try. Go back and look in anyway. Mm. Of course, we'll be back out here tomorrow, and the game will start, our broadcast will start tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern time, a late afternoon game in Philadelphia. Scott McGregor will be going to the mound against Charles Hudson as Larry Anderson comes in. He's the fourth pitcher utilized by Owens today and it's the second appearance that he has made in this series. He worked two innings in relief in game two allowed one run three hits. Lynn Sakata comes up to hit for the first time in the series. One and does Sakata the only infield reserve for Joe out the belly and of course the Hawaiian born Sakata came in to pinch run for Singleton and then stayed in the game at second base. He is also, as Earl pointed out, the emergency catcher. One and one. The Orioles' options, uh, should they lose an infielder, uh, would be either Lowenstein at third base or Gary Renicky. Both have played there. Not an awful lot. Both have played third base. And there's some talk, Earl, as well, that uh, Renicky may be the third baseman next year. What about that? Well, that would give them uh, a solid infield, one where they might hit 100 home runs. With Renneke, as we look at right there at third base, uh, possible 30, 35, Ripken, 30, 35 at shortstop, and Eddie Murray is 30 or 35 at first base. That would be a powerful ball club. Mm. Sakata fouling it away, and the count three balls and two strikes. Sakata, once in a while, capable of knocking one out. We had him on a national telecast hitting a grand slam a couple of years ago. Fly ball to right field. And it's LaFay there to make the catch. One away. That ball didn't seem to be hit that hard, and yet it carried well to right field. 
Shelby comes up. He's batting in the nine spot. It was Shelby who hit the ball with the bases loaded, on which Matthews made that tremendous catch in the sixth inning to turn what might have been a double or a triple into simply a sacrifice fly. As a, hitter. as a result, Philadelphia is still very much in this ballgame. Ripped into right field for a base hit. So Shelby is on. And in this hitless Wonder World Series, at least until today, that's hit number 10 for Baltimore. Goodyear blip hovering above Veteran Stadium. Look at that sky, how blue it is today. Wow, this sky, just perfect weather. Well, we've got a sacrifice situation. The American League pitchers don't go to bat that much. Schmidt ready to charge in from third. Stewart bunting, but very sharply back to Anderson. He goes to Jesus on the first, and they get the double play, 1-6-4. So he got it down all right, but too sharply. No way. Nobody left after seven and a half, five, three, back after this message and a word from our local station. How can a guy, 5-9, have an advantage over these guys? I use the Gillette ad for a razor. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head for a better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See? They don't always stay in my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. So I get a better shave. Close. Comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. Sometimes a little advantage goes a long way. Stallone. This time he's fighting for his life. Nighthawk, Sunday at 9. <laughs> Getting close to dinner, time to pack it in. You look for something better for the long day you put in. Carl's Jr. has dinner wages. We'll set a place for you. Carl's Jr. has dinner wages. United Airlines presents daily service to Hong Kong and daily service to Tokyo. With seven flights a week to Hong Kong and seven flights a week to Tokyo. With United's all-new three-class Royal Pacific service. United Airlines to Hong Kong and to Tokyo. Fly a friend to the Far East. Monday on L.A. Today at home with Jackie Zeman. Eusebio Pedroza in his 17th title defense takes on gutsy Jose Caba, the WBA World Featherweight Championship when ABC's Wide World of Sports returns next Saturday. All right, the crowd coming to life now as the Phillies come up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Five to three, Baltimore. But this is their shot. Rose, Schmidt, LaFay, Matthews. The number two hitter, Pete Rose, has singled and doubled today. He is three for 12 in the World Series and takes high ball one. Oh, team I tell you, look, did you see the way he snapped back at, at Stewart? You're not going to intimidate me. You could, you could see it in his eyes that time. 2-0. Oh. Well, Peter's going to be trying to get on base any way he can because until someone gets on, that tie and run can't come to the plate. Martinez working in the bullpen. That's ball three in the count of three and oh. Asking for trouble quickly here. Martinez if, right there. If Altabelli's open to a second guess, it would be not pinch hitting for Stewart. And it's high, and so Rose is on on four pitches. He does the job. He's up there to get on base. Well, Stewart's into his third inning after going two last night. Here comes out the belly. He's not wasting a second. Mike Schmidt will be coming up. Now you've got a right-handed batter. Then, of course, you've got LaFay, but he can switch there in the sense that Lescano 
normally faces the left-handers. Stewart's going to stay in here. The words there more than likely were, keep this fella in the ballpark. He's probably your last hitter. Joe LaFay, a left-handed hitter, coming up next. So Mike Schmidt, one for three today, and Mike in the World Series. That was a pop fly. The bat shattered. And it fell among three players. An optimist would say he's due, Howard. This is a guy who can do it, and do it quickly. He dotes on the low pitch. Dotes on it. 40 homers during the regular season and 109 runs batted in, and he fouls it straight back above us. 0-1. I think those might have been words that Joel Tabelli relayed to Sammy Stewart also, that this fella's a real good low ball hitter. Just ask Jerry Royce. Schmidt won that first playoff game. One to nothing. A home run off a pretty good pitch by Roy. That was low. Up and in. One and one. Things are getting a little sticky. The ball players create the situation. If he loses Mike Schmidt, if Mike Schmidt gets on base, a left-handed hitter comes to the plate. He's got Tony Perez possibly coming off the bench as the as the winning one. Or Liz Cano, depending on two balls and one strike to count. Nobody out. Bottom of the five to three Baltimore. And shot up in foul ground not much room but it might be playable and is for Dower and he makes the catch fading oh. back on it oh he just he did they really seem to be fighting at the sun on the left side of the field yeah. they really Schmidt are gets, they're having a terrible time Schmidt gets the uh, what have you done lately serenade as he goes back to the dugout <laughs> just Joe look at this now watch Dower you'll see the white of the ball of his glove. That's really up there. I wonder what the hang time on that one was. Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, that is all for Stewart. And Tony Bez has come out on deck to be the pinch hitter. They'll go to Tippy with one out on the eighth. Baltimore five. Philadelphia three. Back in a moment. It's one of my bigger days. <laughs> Buy a beer. Sure. Ah, these fans, I love them me at first but then when i told them who i was next thing you know they're buying me my favorite beer light beer for miller they know us ex big leaguers drink light because it's got a third less calorie less filling and it tastes great thanks hey it's a pleasure to buy a beer for a great pitcher like whitey ford hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so i lied like these from miller wanted in a beer and less hey whitey i thought you were a lefty oh that's right <laughs> Chevrolet. your move to Chevrolet's new celebrity. More. Move into the comfort of more passenger room than 91 out of 95 import cars. Move to celebrity and the traction of front drive. More. Try to find any other front drive automobile that more passenger room for less. Chevrolet! And you. Taking charge. The RCA did is a remote control for your new RCA Color Track 2000. But this unique remote does more than control your TV. It also controls a new RCA video and video disc player. One remote control for total control. The RCA Digital Command Center. A giant step forward with the touch of a finger. We'll open your eyes. Jennings, unique. He is one of the smartest keenest man in the business. ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. The difference can be distinguished. Tippy Martinez, nine victories, 21 saves, had an appendectomy in mid-year, otherwise the numbers would be even better, and a great ERA. Comes into pitch with Tony Perez to pinch hit now. You want to watch where Shelby, the center fielder, is playing. Yesterday, Jim Palmer, a commanding figure, 
count three and one on Perez. Palmer stopped the game, motioned Shelby Moore to right center, where Perez has great power. You know this, Earl. And over went Shelby, and he made a marvelous catch on a drive Perez hit that was enabled only because Palmer had moved him over. Well, Palmer himself knew that he was going to pin him on the outside half of the plate to try to keep him into the ballpark. And knowing uh, Jim Palmer knows where he's going to throw that ball, consequently, he had him over in the right spot. Now, right now, Shelby is shading to left field. More than likely because Tippy's a breaking ball pitcher and Tony is more apt to pull the ball. Just a tad. Now, field almost straight away is it's up high. Perez throughout his career has been a gap hitter. Left center, right center. Two balls, no strikes. One out. Two and one. Pete Rose, the runner at first. One out. Rose held on by Murray. Five three Orioles. Chopper through the middle for a base hit, and Pete Rose will stop at second. So the tying run is aboard as Tony Perez comes off the bench to deliver a single in the center field, and Gary Matthews, who's been the big man in the postseason for Philadelphia, will come to the plate as the go-ahead run as Juan Samuel comes out of the dugout to run for Perez. This is their shot. Owens is going for it. And right now there's action in the Baltimore bullpen. Big Tim Stoddard, a fellow that we haven't heard much about so far in this series, is one. I can bring ball in at 90 miles an hour also. But Martinez is the man you want to have finish the game if you can. If you can. Gary Matthews swings and misses and the count is 0-1. Well, the Phillies have that chance now. They can't ask for more as you look at Tony Perez in that dugout. And if they come through, it will have been Pete Rose again who ignited and Tony Perez, the two men who were the center of that pinching controversy last night. Bow back. So Martinez quickly gets things his way with Matthews now. Oh, and two. Well, sorry, the nickname, of course, for. Gary Matthews is there's a look at Stoddard in the bullpen. Phillies are not without confidence against Martinez. They're convinced, if you listen to them, that he's not as good as he's cracked up to be. Now that's the Phillies players talk. Ground ball left side fielded by Ripken to Sakata for one, and he turns it over. Despite Samuel going in hard, and Martinez gets Matthews to hit into a double play. On an old pitch. Get a ground ball, breaking ball, hit right up the middle. Again, Ripken right in the right spot, turned into an easy double play. Zakata's a good double play man to throw to first base. The inning's over. We go to the ninth, 5 3 Baltimore. Twice more our anniversary yeah great <laughs> the bell yellow pages talks when your fingers do the walk to save trouble and time leslie's flowers we get there fresh how about fast and fast you remembered i ordered the flowers you started duck so i burned the duck after you ordered the flowers <laughs> get the yellow pages talking fresh and fast let your fingers do the walking for the first time in his life, he's struggling, having a hard time in math. He needs help. He can get that help with the home computer from Texas Instruments. It has more educational cartridges than any other computer. They challenge. And coach. The home computer from Texas Instruments. It can give your child a head start in school that could last a lifetime. Score candy bars have the taste of Sweden. The taste of Sweden? That's ridiculous. Rich milk chocolate? 
crunchy toffee, made in swim's taste, a mecca beloved in. Throw me in a sunny league in a pinned kosher cloth. Score, the chocolate and toffee taste of Sweden. On my mama to get on them, on my papa to get on them, on my brew. Don't miss it. Unbeaten Nebraska, the number one team in the nation, battles the upset-minded Missouri Tigers. ABC's NCAA College Football, next. Well, we've been talking about what? The Phillies are managed by a gang of four? The fearsome force. <laughs> Here we go. Sexto Lescano takes over in right field. As we go to the top of the ninth inning, Jim Dwyer to lead things off. Ripken and Morello against Anderson, who works out of a stretch, even with nobody on base. Now the vision is much better for the batter. Yes, it is. Much better. And the count, one ball and one strike. You may say that vision is better, but it still is a little bit tough. That little line of sunlight in front of the plate is just a tough time spots, of day. Yeah. It's just a tough time of day, and it's very, very difficult, as you said earlier, to pick up the spin on the breaking ball. Dwyer almost runs into the pitch, and the count, two balls and one strike. And they're from high atop Veteran Stadium, a look down at exactly where the shadow line is. You know, something I like to make note, I've constantly been around Morgan and Rose, and they just don't believe the Dwyers and the Fords and the Shelbys. They just can't realize that these people are outstanding baseball players, and they refuse to give them credit. They don't want to be beat by Fords and Shelbys. Well, that was well they haven't been beaten yet, but they're close. It's amazing. The Orioles are very much the same sort of team that appeared in the 79 World Series. In fact, 15 of these guys were there. Team without the uh, true superstars, though right make a case, even though Murray's having a terrible World Series, with Eddie being a superstar and Ripken on his way to that stature. But it's a resourceful club. Rose goes to Anita block it, pick it up, and make it three unassisted. One out. I think as an opposing player, I can see Baltimore epitomize itself back when they did all of the scoring. They used four pinch hitters. After that, made four defensive changes and a pitcher. And if you add that all up, that's nine changes in one inning overall. Everybody and the efficiency remained. You saw that efficiency in Sakata's execution of the double play, which he does very well. And a few extra steps in center field with a better arm. Mm -hmm. Shelby. Gave up a little defensively behind the plate. Ripken takes outside. Looking ahead out of the bottom of the inning for the Phillies. Gross is due to lead off, but you can forget that. He's a left-hand batter with Martinez in there. They'll go to the bench. Then Diaz and De Jesus do up. As they're down to the six, seven, and eight spots. Two and all the count. They already have Liz Cano in the game. He's got Kiko Garcia and Bob Dernier as right-handed pinch hitting possibilities in the bottom of the inning, and also Ozzy Virgil. If you were managing, what would you do with young Rick? Well, I'd walk to him before the ball game and ask him, or at least point out, that uh, they're pitching him on the outside half of the plate. There's a pitch that got in a little bit, and Ripken had a good cut. Uh, it's hard after the success that a ball had during the course of the season, three, 18, 27 home runs, to make them try to adjust for a fi uh, five, six, or seven game series. But they've stayed right out there, and I'd point that out to him and let him take it from there, Howard. Ridge, what about you? Well, a guy like Ripken, I just give him a uniform, a bat, and a ball, and point him toward the toward where the field is really because when you hit 318 with 27 home runs you make it, you have made adjustments during the season all year long that's hit in the air to left field and hooking into the corner and foul on a nice play and again the pitch was on the inside half of the play it's a very very fine line Howard you have to let a guy play and let him do his own thing pretty soon he can get full of all kinds of thoughts and his mind can get cluttered and believe me in 1983 I'm a witness to that the guys like Murray the guys like Ripken and Schmidt that are having their problems 
they're doing the job they're doing. They've been here long enough. They've accomplished what they've accomplished because they're able to adjust and work out their own problems. 3-2 pitch to Ripken is foul tipped and not held by Diaz, and he took a pretty good shot. He sure did. Right off the mask. So the count stays three and two. Get to see it one more time. Not quite sure where he got hit. Right in the mask. Of course, what happened to you this year, Reggie, was you wanted so hard to come through, you wound up unwittingly fighting yourself, and then you were caught in your own trap. I could probably give you 99 explanations because I've heard so many. <laughs> That's a good one, though. He goes to right field and toward the corner, and moving over is Lescano to make the catch. So Sixto got a good jump on the ball, which is not a particular, particularly easy thing to do right now because he's looking into the sun. Two down. And here is Eddie Murray, who's one for three today and two for 50 in the series. Like nice case in point here. Guy that hits in the middle of the order, Eddie Murray, only two for 15 right now. But a big walk when he moved that runner over in his scoring position. You hit in the middle of the order. If you do anything, make any kind of contribution, a walk, uh, a hit batsman, get on base with an error, you clutter up the bases and you got action going because you're hitting in the meat of the order. Out away and the count one ball and one strike the walk to me was an indication that he's finally he might have finally relaxed and that it's going to made up his mind that he's going to wait for a good pitch to hit that's right you can almost watch a guy's body how he handles himself at the plate and tell how he's swinging the bat if he's right or if he's not right ninth inning crowd is quiet They'll come to life, of course, when the Phillies come up in the bottom of the ninth inning. But uh, their club right now on the verge of going down three games to one. You know, I expected this crowd to be a lot more boisterous with almost 67,000 people in the stands. They've been quiet the last two days, relatively. Chopper, right side. Pete Rose will take care of it himself. And it's a one, two, three inning. So Anderson does his job. He keeps the Orioles in check anyway. Keeps the Phillies close and won't. Go to the bottom of the ninth inning in game four, Baltimore five, and Philadelphia three. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. See Pat here? He'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so, and then I'd come, come in, toss three or four pitches, and walk away with a win. But I had to, had to train just, just like the rest of us. Yeah, well, I still like to keep in shape, and I drink he drinks light, light beer. beer from Miller. See, light's less light. filling, and light really, really tastes great. Will you just let me finish? Why? You never let me finish. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Let me finish that for you, Sparky. Oh. <laughs> Going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Rick Dempsey, who's out of the game right now, talking earlier about Tippy Martinez and his effectiveness this season. I don't know what has made him that he has always been that way Howard he ever since we were with the Yankees together I saw him throw that curveball uh, the first time over in a minor league uh, spring training game I said Jimmy many Christmas this guy's like Sandy Koufax I used to watch him when I was a, a young player and uh, he's just he's been awesome ever since I don't think he's ever lost his curveball he has always had it and always will and <laughs> as far as I know he, it's the greatest curveball I've ever caught. And the first man who will be facing that curveball and the rest of his repertoire on this inning will be Gary Maddox. Tito Landrum, the big hero last Saturday when he hit the home run in the 10th inning that made it 1-0 Baltimore, and they wound up winning the game 3-0. Landrum goes in to play right field. And again, a reminder, college football, Nebraska taking on Missouri following the game. Irving Fry. Your guy Irving will be playing, right? No, a lot of times players like Tippy Martinez suffer from their lack of size. Tippy's about five foot eight or five foot nine, the same as Joe Morgan, and you don't realize how great these players are, how much they can do, how talented they are, until you see them in action. Well, Rick Dempsey was right about one of the best curveballs in the American League. 
I'll agree to that. I've swung and missed it a few times. Gary Maddox takes up five, all one. Maddox hitting for Gross, then Diaz do up next, then De Jesus. One ball, one strike to count. Do you see the placement, the location of that pitch, Earl? Yes, I did. And it, Paul Owens might have the take sign on being uh, two runs behind trying to get a man on base. Great curveball. Right there. Getting a situation, too, where Tippy knows he has people wondering about his curveball, and all of a sudden he sneaks the fastball by you. One two pitch to Maddox. There's a fastball chopped on the ground down to Lenny Sakata, who throws him out, one away. There was an example. He got the out with a fastball. So Maddox is gone, and Bo Diaz comes up. Diaz is one for three. Ozzie Virgil has come out of the dugout. Actually, De Jesus will be next, and then they're thinking about Virgil if they prolong the inning and get to the pitcher's spot. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Ruin Arledge, Dennis Lewin, producing today's game, Chef Forty directing, Bill Morris, our technical director, Peter Lasser, our associate producer, John Bassoni and Woody Fryman, our ADs. One and one the count. There was that curveball one more time, and Tippy will stay with it. You it's see it go down. Oh. Line drive, and Sakata can't grab it. It's a base hit into right field, and so the Phillies will get the tying run to the plate. Bo Diaz. Having a fine series. He's at really? first base. Let's see, will the Phillies run for him now? And they will, yes. Bob Dernier has great speed. Led the team in steals this season. Comes in. He's not coming in to steal right now, obviously, but it because they want the fastest man they can first base in this situation. No one ever I've played and come to the plate in this situation, whether I played for Earl or or Dick Hauser, no matter who the fellow was, or Gene Locke, they were very interested in getting the tying run to the plate. So the opportunity the opportunity now presents itself where the manager is comfortable now. He's got a chance to win or tie his game. Yes, he does. De Jesus at the plate. Looks at a strike. Yep. And the count is 0-1. Not really a long ball threat, but he's come through once in a while. They're near at first base. De Jesus chasing it. Oh, did he chase that? 0 oh, 2. Not really a long ball threat, but the occasional long ball is there. And in this ballpark, you've got to shoot from the 371 foot mark over to the 330 mark in the left field and left center field area. Ball has tremendous carry there. It certainly does. And he had four home runs during the course of the season. Foul to the plate. The count remains. No balls and two strikes. Owens has already used Perez, of course. His power man from the right side. He's used Samuel as a pinch runner. Only the right-handed batter really available to him right now is Kiko Garcia, who has no more power than De Jesus. Yeah, Kiko can fool you. Yeah, he fooled us in the 79 series. I think it kind of shows right here that the Baltimore Orioles their advantage really is their bench. One ball, two strikes to count. Teams are so evenly matched when it comes to pitching, relief pitching, defense, offense. It all of a sudden gets down to maybe a little edge here with Baltimore, and that I think was shown today. You saw it was pointed out in the pregame shows. Eddie Murray not even worried about the runner as it's chopped slowly to the left side, fielded by Dower, throws to Murray, and that was a very close play at it first really base. It really was. But they got him for the second out. So two down with Dernier now at second. Old Dower thinking about right there, just get the one out. Here's the chopping ground ball. Dower went pretty far to his left, threw off balance, and became a much a closer play because he didn't get a lot on the ball. And there was no thought there at all of going to second base because the tying run was the guy running down the first base line, and now it's all the way moved, all the way back to the plate, and that's what they're after. So, so it's down to Ozzy Virgil. And while Ozzy can hit one out, it's not reasonably expectable because he is not a real good hitter. And it gets down to what Reggie said, the Baltimore bench superiority. Let's put him ahead. And Virgil's a real uh, fastball hitter, and I think he's going to see a lot of curveballs. 
Paul Owens would have had six to Lescano, a fellow that knows Tippy Martinez and can hit the ball out of the park to use, but he used him defensively the previous inning. Virgil made the last out last night and takes outside. One ball and one strike to count. He's the tying run, five to three, the Orioles on top. Two down, one ball, one strike on Virgil, which they're near the runner at second. If Virgil can get on, then there's Joe Morgan to contend with, and you got a shot at winning it. Well, I'm sure that Tippy knows right now. He knows what the task is at hand. Low ball two. Two and one on Virgil. And behind Morgan, Pete Rose. Oh. In that Houston-Philadelphia playoff series, the Phillies came back miraculously. They were down three runs. Remember, Al? Absolutely. A five. Three balls, one strike. Nolan Ryan butchered a Bob Boone double play ball, and the Phillies exploded with Rose, the fulcrum of the action. Three and one to count. It'll be very interesting to see what Tippy thinks his best pitch is right now, or the one he has most control of. This is the one he's going to throw right now. Fastball for a strike. Full count. That was the one time that Berger could have sat on the fastball. And sitting on the fastball, I mean, really look for it. Look for it on the inside half of the plate and have a real big cut. That's exactly correct, Earl. I know in that situation right there, if I was hitting, you only got one shot. You got to look for a ball in. You got to get the bat head out and give your team a chance to tie the ball game. And that's with one big swing. 3-2 pitch is hit right back through the middle, and it's a base hit. They will wave their near end, and so the winning run with another fastball. Virgil was ready for it this time. It wasn't the same type of pitch that could be hit out of the park. It was on the outside half of the plate, and Virgil had to go up the middle, but he kept the rally alive. You're going to tell me this is intention? Joe Morgan, who is 0 for 4 today, 4 for 15 in the series, who has had two home runs in the series, both off left-handers, the winning run. First run scored off the Baltimore relievers in this series. You saw the time call by Frank Bully. Crowd is going crazy. They've seen the Phils respond in situations like this before. Morgan won't give any ground, as you have seen, against any left-handed pitcher. Everybody is standing at the bet. A strike. 0-1. Seemed to be standing there measuring that curveball. Tippy knows that he hit Scott McGregor's curveball out the ballpark. Morgan hits a soft liner to Sakata, and the Orioles are one game away from the World Championship. A soft line drive to the second baseman Sakata, and that quells the crowd. And the Phillies go back with their backs to the wall now, down three games to one. Final score, five to four. Baltimore back after this from your local stations. Monday, catch those incredible kids and jump high for a steeplechase race that's incredible. It's getting close to dinner. Time to pack it in. You look for something better for the long day you put in. Carl's Jr. has been. I fly a lot of miles on TWA, and I can earn free tickets. But now TWA also counts miles I fly on Eastern and Qantas. My miles add up faster, so I can earn free tickets sooner. Free tickets to almost anywhere on Earth. Imagine TWA doing that. <laughs> what in the world will they think of next? 
Sure, you have medical insurance, but you still have to pay the deductible and part of the hospital and for routine exams and prescriptions, and every day more of your cash seems to float away. If you had MaxiCare, you wouldn't have to pay a deductible or hospital bill. With MaxiCare, routine exams and prescriptions cost just $2. MaxiCare puts your money back where it belongs, in your pocket. Ask your employer about MaxiCare, the new generation in health care. Unwed Mothers, starting Monday at 4. And our thanks to Alan Roth up here, Steve Hurt for the graphics. As Game 4 of the 1983 World Series has been brought to you by Chevrolet, official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By McDonald's, sponsors of amateur sports from the neighborhood to the Olympics by the Texas Instruments Home Computer, creating useful products and services for you. And by Light Beer from Miller, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, Earl Weaver, Reggie Jackson. So long from Philadelphia, there it is, the final score, Baltimore 5, Philadelphia 4, Baltimore leading three games to one. Stay tuned for NCAA college football, number one ranked Nebraska against Missouri. And join us tomorrow, beginning at 2.30 Eastern time for the Ryder Cup golf matches live from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, followed by game five of the World Series from the vet in Philadelphia, 4.30 Eastern time. Blimp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through a promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the official airline of the 1984 LA Olympic Games and proud sponsor of the United States Olympic team.